Hey there. Oh no, I don't have my chat in here. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not used to this uh, layout. Let me see if I can see it in the chat in here. Oh yeah, I, I think I can't. <laughs> Let's see if I can like put this in here. Pop up. Okay. I like how I try like to make everything fit in <laughs> just while live streaming. Amazing. Professionality. <laughs> How are you doing, everyone? Welcome. Here we go. Hi, hi. How are you doing? I think everything's working. I think the audio is working smoothly. Let me know if there is like some weird beat rate or anything going on because it's the first time I stream in this channel, so something might fail. <laughs> I can see and hear perfectly. Amazing. Thank you, Nat. Beautiful Colgajo. Colgajo goes. <laughs> the Colgajos are now international. This is a small uh, interactive game I use in my own channel and I, I wanted to show it to all of you. You can create your own weird looking creatures, you following the instructions in the right. So feel free to use everything and play around. You have to, jing ah, yeah, amazing. To commit today. Yeah, you had a second chance, Danny. <laughs> Hi, Cyril. Oh, I didn't put a tweet or an X. Let me... Okay, so... Uh, this is starting... And a red bubble or something, rojo. Here. Here we are. Hi, Blur. Don't worry, people, she won't read the chat. <laughs> Oh, I even connected the Numerica to this chat, so Numerica is working, but I cannot time out people. So maybe Nat is time outing the people that is failing in the Numerica. <laughs> like manual Numerica thing. Oh, is it not working? Oh no, it disconnected. Let me let me fix it. Oh, it's connected to my channel. Let me. Let me connect it to this channel so you can play. Oops. So this should be working now. Okay, so 16. Is this made with the dot? <laughs> Maybe, maybe they, they ban me if I say that this was previously of the Godot one, but it's open source, so uh, I'm planning to port it to Godot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe now, now I get banned, like the connection is lost and <laughs> everyone hates me in the Godot community and everything, like I lost all the credibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's open source at least. It was made in Redacted, indeed. Like, I cannot say the engine. <laughs> Not good out though. I was thinking of, for, uh, for legal reasons, we don't talk about the Colgajos, indeed. <laughs> well, I don't know, a few months ago we talked about... about doing this in Godot because I'm slowly porting all my plugins and everything to Godot. I already uh, ported one of my, like the most used plugin I ever did. That was the very simple chat. It's already in Godot, so yeah. 
Jag det fel. Gud, på vad en dit. Så, so, you still have a few minutes to create your own colgajos. And then we will start. I, I have prepared like something. Today's stream is hosted by Practical and Oh! I'm not Practical NPC. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I Me, mean, I can pretend to be him, but he is a better programmer than I am. <laughs> Uh, are you able to share what the avocado title means? Yeah, I can. Like, I ask the kindly, I ask really, really kindly to all the Godot people uh, if I can be the first official avocado. And they granted me the title. Like, the old knights, you know, with the sword and everything, uh, they let me be the first official avocado. Does it have any advantages no it hasn't <laughs> does it have like anything to do with anything at all no it hasn't but i wanted to be an avocado why not the toots well i mean maybe you can ask for a different vegetable i i wanted to be an avocado you can be the the, the vegetable you want increíble soy feliz <laughs> I'm really happy. My my dream was to become an avocado of one engine, and Godot was the one giving me the opportunity of become a real avocado, an official avocado, an official aguacate. <laughs> official aguacate means even like. What if I want to be a fruit instead of a vegetable? Well, indeed, I, I'm playing good pizza, great pizza, and now I'm learning that some of the stuff I thought they were not fruits were actually fruits. So who knows? Aguacates are the best. <laughs> Extreme, you have to join first. Are you from Argentina? No, I'm Spanish from Spain. I'm from Spain. So English is not my first language. So please be kind. I will make a lot of uh, mistakes, but I think uh, it's it's easy to understand me. morning I have been streaming uh, in my own channel in both Spanish and English because I wanted to practice a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of English and thanks to Alexander I could practice a lot of English so I'm really really thanks thankful to him your English is stellar if you ask me no is thank you very much as an avocado, you will not make mistakes. You will make little accidents. Yeah, indeed, this sounds cuter. Happy <laughs> little accidents. So, 30 seconds, finish your colgajos because we are about to start. You are about to uh, see my face. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. Hello, uh, Refills, how you doing? Quick, just another one. Come on, you can do it, like, join Randomized Comet. Come on, come on. <laughs> we are about to mercifully destroy them. I hope this is working because, you know, like I prepare all the stuff here in the Godot channel, but I, might have break something. Hopefully I didn't. So here we are. Okay, okay, it worked. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Everything is working. Is the vida de diva mercilessly. <laughs> yes and yes, amazing. 
Thank you and welcome everyone. Uh, this is my first streaming all in English. Oh, everything is working smoothly. Okay, thank you. So, I have this, maybe it's only in here. Maybe, I don't know how it, this was supposed to be. So, maybe in here? No, this covers my face, wait. Maybe in here, it's nice. Oh, I like the sticker animation. That's amazing. Thank you, everyone. I don't have the notifications, so I don't think I will say thank you to everyone following and subscribing and everything uh, that goes in there. But thank you very much, the thing. And today, uh, the really, really kind people of uh, Godot Engine uh, let me take over this stream to showcase uh, what I have been doing and develop with all of you. I will be mostly working uh, on my own game that is called Wax Heads. You have a command called, I think it was uh, Bang Wax Heads or something like that. So you can check the, the game I've been working. It's uh, made in Godot. It's my first game in Godot engine. I have over seven years of experience, but uh, I started using Godot in uh, October last year, so uh, rather new. Before that, I worked uh, I worked in a different engine, <laughs> and I also uh, were working in the game engine company indeed. So it's been a change. It was scary, scary at the very first uh, the very first time I, I chose to change engines because, you know, it seemed like I was throwing away everything I knew. Uh, but <laughs> the one that shall not be named. Yeah, I'm... And maybe they kick me if I say other engines, so... <laughs> How hard was the change? It wasn't that hard indeed because I, I suspected that I could use a lot of the knowledge I already had uh, using another engine because I I started using Unity engine. Then I was working with uh, Unreal at some point in my in my career, you know, and I realized I could change to Unreal engine quite easy, you know, because ninety percent of the stuff I already knew about making video games could be used in this new one. So. Yeah, I suspected that uh, Godot was uh, was going was going to be easy uh, to to learn. I'm Spanish. I'm Spanish. Uh, English is not my first language, uh, and I usually stream in Spanish. This is my first uh, streaming in English. I hope uh, I hope I can go three straight hours just talking in English. It's gonna be exhausting. <laughs> I'm not used to that, but well, let's try. Let's try. Let's see how it goes. So, um, right now I'm using Godot 90% of the time. I still use like some other technologies like web development or like other uh, engines because I work as a freelance because, you know, I need money to eat and pay bills and that kind of stuff. Uh, but my first, com like my commercial game right now, the one I'm developing every day, uh, it's proudly made in Godot. Hola Rocío, ¿qué tal? Today's in English, pero... <laughs> I heard a rumor that if you speak multiple language, your brain is stronger or more intelligent or something like that. Well, I can speak Italian too. Quindi, se c'è qualcuno che parla italiano eh, sul chat, eh, ciao, come state? <laughs> <laughs> I hope everything's going amazing. So, let me introduce you to the project uh, I'm already working. My The artist of the game, I don't make the art of the game. Need more, oh, something like that. <laughs> I, I don't do the art of the game, so if you keep, uh, like it's the first thing that people ask, because the, the art is amazing, to be honest, uh, but it's not mine. It's a uh, Mary's uh, Mary's Summerwolf art, and he's an amazing artist. Maybe you recognize the art somehow. Let me 
for it. Yeah, I think this one should be working. Oh, yeah. Welcome to my project. Don't judge the mess. <laughs> because I I learned... Okay, so intro... Uh, menu. I learned while working. So, this is the art of the game. Sorry, his hair. It's his portfolio. He's a uh, Mary Summerwell, I think. Maybe like artist or like art. Well, Murray. Patati Murray. Okay, you can look up that on over the internet and he will just be around. He is half of uh, Patati Games. That is the studio we created uh, last October. And as you see, the art is really cool. Like, it's amazing. I've been working with this uh, sprite since October. And every day I realize new small details around that I didn't see, like small references of different games and like random stickers around. And that's pretty amazing. Okay, we have Mary in here, so say hello to Mary. He's around. And he's the amazing artist I'm working with. So, um, today he prepared, prepared some uh, sprites so I can add, because lately I have been optimizing and just refactoring a lot, so it's not really uh, entertaining to see because, you know, it's just like, going over my own code and like trying to fix stuff and like me fighting over refactoring issues but instead of that i ask mary to create song sprites for a new app on because there is a mobile phone in the in the game and we have several apps so we are going to add a new one i think in the three hours we will be here I think I, ha I have enough time to make the whole app, but maybe I need some more time. So you will have to ask the Godot team to uh, invite me over another time and finish the application. I love your art style, very Scott Pilgrim inspiration. I love Scott Pilgrim. There are a lot of people saying that, and he's really, really proud of that. I think it's one of his main uh, like inspirations. Uh, so yeah, I think he's happy about that. Share mindset, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely, little so what we can do, and it's a ref indeed. So, let me. Uh, do you want to start with a small, like, um, play, walk, uh, like, play um, this, you know, like, play the game to see what is the game about? Uh, it's currently in two languages, English and Spanish, because I really like accessibility and I'm Spanish myself and I want, let's say, my mother to be able to play it. So I'm translating everything. Uh, maybe we need like professional translating eventually, but well, I think it's not that bad <laughs> right now. So it's made with Godot. Uh, we use a dialogue manager by Nathan Hode. He's amazing. He's an amazing developer. Uh, and also the texture packer plugin, we find out that it was really ha like helpful when, let me put this in here so I don't cover anything. Uh, quite useful, especially for Mary when he has to create the different atlases and import to the project because otherwise he has to like chop all the dot .tres, you know. So texture packer has been really, really helpful. Uh, the music, there are music that is specifically specially made for the game by Gina Logling. I don't know how to pronounce Logling, but Gina Logling, uh, she's an amazing composer and the music is amazing. I can't stop dancing every time I hear that. I, I will laughing, laughing. Okay, perfect. I'll have to check out this texture packer. It's not free though. The app is uh, one, I think it's one's payment, but you have to pay if you get like an updated version. But the plugin for Godot is free. It's in the lib. So we have this uh, Gina Loughlin music. 
and also like another uh, open source like uh, free music by my friend David and also some loops that we use in here so do you want to see how the game it is? In the year 1988, the iconic dream pop band Becoming Violet were on top of the world. We have Mor Morgan McIntyre. I don't know how to, like, I still don't know how to pronounce McIntyre. McIntyre? It sounds really British as an as an, as an Azar name. And <laughs> McIntyre, like a tire of the car. Okay, so McIntyre. Pat Brennan, the quiet one, James Grant, the childhood sweetheart, and Willow McIntyre, the little sister. They had three chart smashing albums, a record selling sold out worldwide tour, and a hit single for film Murder on the Moose Hill. But then Becoming Violet turned to Becoming Nothing. Quite dramatic. There has never been explained an official explanation given for the past. Uh, there has never been an official explanation given for the band's demise, although many suspect it might have something to do with Dove Can Still Fly. Dove Can Still Fly was Willow McIntyre's solo debut album, a smash hit, but it's seen as the primary catalyst for what killed Becoming Violet. Perhaps the most offending detail was who supported Willow. James Grant, Morgan's childhood sweetheart, was the album's producer. And it wasn't long until the two announced, announced they were a couple together. But then, what the elder McIntyre sister becoming Violet's Morgan? Well, it's rumored Morgan hasn't spoke to either Willow or James since. No one can be quite sure, as she disappeared from the public eye. It's a mystery, my dear viewer. Where is Morgan McIntyre now? Well, 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 only five minutes late. You got guts, new kid, I'll give you that. And we can say, don't fire me, oh, but I saved a cat. Oh, <laughs> look, Morgan, yeah, indeed. This is all made with an even player. It's a mix of dialogue manager and uh, and the uh, animation player. I like combined the two of them. I can show the, the code in a while when we finish the walkthrough. So yeah, don't worry, don't fire me. Okay, so don't fire me. Well, relax, relax, I'm not gonna fire you. But come late again and I will make sure you dust every shelf with my old toothbrush. Anyway, let's get you started on your first day. Welcome to Repeat the Records, a, love, a local keepsake. And for one simple reason, we care about people. A new record signifies a gateway to finding new love and connection but people don't always know how to find that. So it's our job to help. Oh, come on, don't look so scared, you will be fine. So, you good to go? Let's open up. Right, enough jumping, let's get this store open up. And here we have the Mimi Superfan, that is our first customer. And we also have the notification on the phone. In here we have like all the dialogue tracker to, to know what so we don't rely in memory of what has already been said. And we have the phonogram that is kind of like a Instagram-me kind of thing. So good news for people who love sister-related news. We now have all their album back in stock, including their new Dizzling and this old dog, and in this old dog's opinion, heavily misunderstood, Door to a Light. We can even like go and like all the things in here. So, back to the store, we have the Mimi Superfan. Hiya, oh my gosh, do you like Mimi? Of course. Oh yes, you get it. We are officially besties. Do you have the new Mimi record, right? Because I just really love her. So, look for record. Like, do you have the new Mimi album, right? And we can now navigate around the store. We have all the albums in these shelves and it's a lot of details going on 
in the in the store. We also have like a lot of references of other games and stuff we Mary and I uh, developed together. Like this is existing gochi, that is an existential tamagotchi we made. Uh, this is one of my uh, last games that is called nkcreator.zip and we have a lot of like different messages around uh, like hidden secrets I even a full functional arcade in here okay <laughs> so she was the new Mimi album we have to go through the albums and we can go and check all the albums like eat some chocolates, play with some tamagotchis and everything in there. And if we click in here, we add the record to this. It's in the top, yeah, indeed. Extreme bag, it's in here. So we have the first Mimi album, but we have the new Mimi album that is in here. So we can add to the checkout. And then in here, and sorry, I covered part of the screen, but you know, you can play the demo yourself. <laughs> so we can print the receipt and add some, like, let's say, as, as, hand, heart, fire, cat. <laughs> we can recommend here. Oh my gosh, that's it. Like I have already listened to it, loads of streaming, but I had to get in record. Okay, bye. And we have these three albums. Three points, sorry. This is this uh, character has some facial expressions because uh, we are planning to add a lot of them, but you know, we are still un under development, so we don't have all the characters with uh, fashion, uh, like face expressions, but this one already have it. I hope like, no, Wait, no, I demand. Yes, that's the stuff. I demand a very good card game. Bring me to me a delightful discount. So we have to go with the discounts. And we have a specific, because for example, this is the one that has more uh, discounts. Like in here, what does it sound? Well, like when you mix the sexy, messy sounds of electronic fuzz with the lineful moans of desire, and Title Grass has the answer with their seductive Let's Pass. Henry Kemp approved it uh, with two thrusts. Okay, so we have this. This is the one with the uh, highest uh, discount. But we can go here and give them, for example, this one that is not like it has a slightly medium, you know, discount. And it will answer with a bat, of course. Hey folks, how are you doing? He said, well, I must admit that it's certainly a discount. Although my money-saving nostrils confess to me, you are hitting even bigger bargains. But never mind, that is a hunt for another day. For now, I shall accept your measly offering. That up for now. So yeah, indeed, like we have like multiple, like you are slightly incorrect, we are 100% correct or we are, you know, like just in the middle. And in here we have, for example, Mimi Superfan was really happy with the records we gave her. So, oh my gosh, it's here, finally here. Thank you, Repeater Record, for giving me a still Mimi. I am complete, time to listen again. So this one, if we gave her the wrong record, the image and the message will be different. So. Even if you are interacting on purpose or without knowing the answer in a different way, you will get some reactivity in the game. And we also have some songs specifically done for the game. I don't know if you are ready for this, but this is one of the most amazing songs I have ever heard. So, Beware. This is how Mimi sounds.
How cool is that? Like, how cool is that track? I could, I could listen. I think the first day they sent me this track, I couldn't stop listening to it. Like, it just goes like over the top. <laughs> because also music, indeed. We have another tracks. For example, this one is a little bit more like chill, you know? This is also amazing, like, it's a little bit more chill, but it's pretty cool, right? And we also have this uh, Limbo Party Becoming Violet one. if you could 3D print the actual records. Well, I have something in there. Moncho, ¿me puedes traer los, los vinilos? Well, this will be a mega, but it will be cool if you... Yeah, Alexander, it's on the, it's on the staff. This is also quite amazing, right? So, this is, uh, is this old music already by Gina? Yeah, she's the composer of the songs. So, let me show you what thing I did for all the events I have had like in person, uh, because we are showcasing, oh God, it's been a mess, wait, all the stickers, oh no, wait, wait, here we are. Give me a second. Because I have like a thousand stickers of the game. And they are falling over. Here we are. So, we have the game. <laughs> Unbox the stream, indeed. We have the game in several, like, let's say, uh, in several uh, events. Like, it's been showcased in uh, WASD, uh, Amaze uh, in Berlin also in Spain, in Valencia, in the summit, and in Guadalindi. And to decorate the booth, like the small stand I had, I did all, <laughs> all the records came true, you know. I printed all the covers, I glued them, I bought a lot of like actual seven inches records, I put like all the info in both the Spanish and English with the same, even the font is exactly the same. <laughs> and I, I am showcasing them like in all the events and all the people stand by just to check everything that is going in there. And I have all of them. For example, the Mimi one that we were listening to is this one. And you can check that there is an actual record in there. <laughs> So I'm quite happy about these. Everyone wants to buy them, but I need them to showcase the game. So yeah. I'm the programmer, but I'm, I like doing creative stuff, I guess. So the 
loop is like this. We have customers that come by and ask for new records, like my older brother. He wants to know about music and she doesn't know uh, about music, but she saw this box poster around and uh, she turns 13 and wants to know some music. I should get this one right. My young impressionable mind would be too challenged by this, I hope. So this one is, for example, a little bit tricky because you might want to give her the one she wants, but if you read the description, we have the splitting critics and fans alike. Sister new album is a challenging and abrasive record. Not for the faint hearted, now key newcomers may be better off checking out their seminal debut first, included his single stick, a stick in my eye. So for example, for this girl that is starting to join uh, the music, uh, you know, uh, environment, maybe this one that is their first album is better. So we give her this album instead and she's totally amazed by it. So we recommended her the most appropriate, appropriate uh, for her. So. This is the game. It goes on with mini games and everything. You can just check uh, the demo that is already on a stream, uh, on Twitch, on Twitch, on Steam. Sorry. And we have all this project in here. Everything. I'm live streaming all the process because I really like showing what I'm doing. It's mostly in Spanish. So it's time for a digital RAM. <laughs> I already showed digital, but indeed I put like the whole game I did like for my first Godot game that is called Digital Godot Dungeon. I put it in the demo and in the game because it's really important. Like, I don't know, I really like it's really meaningful to me. And uh, when Mary asked me if we could add the game in there, uh, I was okay with that. So it's in there. <laughs> and it was really easy because of how uh, Godot manages know these, uh, notes and all that stuff. I only had to do a little bit of refactoring to just uh, stop using uh, auto loads and like the CSV localization system and uh, everything related to that. And I think it took me like three days, two, three days to just port everything from Godot as a single project to a uh, wax heads. Modding support plant. Well, we are not thinking about that yet. But it could be quite amazing, right? I didn't know you could put the sprite notes in control node instead. Yeah, like uh, Godot is quite quite permissive. Uh, sometimes, if you nest to uh, the stuff with control stuff, you might get some weird things happening. But they are not really. It's really permissive what you can do with the nesting. What platform are you supporting? PC, Linux, Mac, mobile? Well, we are mainly focusing right now in PC and Linux because, you know, like we are just like in early development stages, but we plan it to be uh, also for consoles like Xbox, PlayStation and all that stuff, especially for example, Switch. I think this game would look amazing and do amazing on Switch. But for now, we don't focus on that because, you know, we are still need a publisher right now. We are seeking for one. Um, it works in mobile, but it's just accidental. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just because, you know, Godot is amazing and you can just export to, <laughs> to, to Android quite a straightforward. Uh, I just had to add, uh, for example, a small, um, a small like visual controls for the Digi Dogo because you use the the keyboard to play that, and uh, that was all. The rest of that, 
it's really like point and click so it's not difficult i'm not using the touch uh, notes and just simulating the first touch with uh, with the mouse integrating the godot mod loader oh that's that's really cool kubus we're not thinking of that right now yet but that would be really amazing because for example I would love to see people doing different stories that are not like the main story. You know what I mean? Like different characters and different uh, challenges uh, that will go in there with the same records or maybe like different records. Uh, it would be pretty cool. But yeah, it's in early development, so we are not focusing on that yet. And in here, I have the new stuff that Mary pushed to me, the new app that is called Oh Shame. <laughs> I have created a lot, like a post-launch update, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, we don't plan to publish the game like in the following months. I don't know exactly when are we launching the game because, you know, there is still plenty to do. We have around 40 minutes demo already out, but the game will take, I think, around six to eight hours. So it's still plenty of stuff to do. Publishing next month, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> A few more weeks. This is almost finished, right? So I have created a lot of systems to allow uh, Mary, that he's the artist, to do almost uh, all the content without the need to code. I use a lot of resources to, uh, you know, like, so he doesn't need to to modify the scenes. And we are using this dialogue uh, manager. For example, in the introduction we saw, is this one. So they can like hide buttons on the interface they can set the background color play animations from the scene that is already loaded play music different track musics it's not dialogic this is called uh, it's by nathan hold and it's called let me show this in here and it's called the uh, dialogue manager Nathan Hout, yeah. So, he can do a lot of animations and stuff and it's really straightforward for uh, for Mary. He can like, let's, let's make Clive uh, enter to the left and say all this stuff. They can play these uh, animations, etc., etc. So, this is the introduction. They can all even like fade out, fade in, all that stuff in there. For example, the second day that is just the wish list uh, message, you know, you can do all this stuff in here. And even like fading out. It has all the, if you have already used, for example, Ink by Inkle Studios, that is also an open source uh, scripting language uh, for interactive fiction. Uh, you will get like you will see this quite familiar you know because you can just put the name of the character and all the text and with the different options in here it's not as complex as ink studios because that's a really like a full scripting language uh, with a lot of uh, options but in here i do have the code to fill all the gaps in the functionality but it allows you to make like a stitches like the other one and get set different variables to to all like the score system uh, it supports all the bb code tags and it's quite straightforward and easy to read i created all these small a game state variable so he can store stuff and check them later to see if the record was correct or not and he can also check not if the last recommended lp was one of them 
but if the band was called in a specific way, etc. Dialogue Manager is the It's amazing. I did like a PR uh, uh, to fix one thing in the localization. Really, really small fix. Uh, so I am officially a contributor of the project, I guess. <laughs> And is it rich uh, text? Can you animate the text? Yeah, indeed. Like, for example, in here, I have the wave in the love, and it will parse it quite straight, uh, like straightforward. He accepted it, so I'm like officially a PR. We are also using these tags for all the like expressions, and also, do you remember the phonogram uh, notifications that were? popping in the middle of the game. It's already in here, so I gave uh, Mary all the control over the notifications that were appearing, and this is like the image that will be in there. Then this one that is like the, the person that is posting it, the reaction of each of them, like it will have 510 hearts, 274 fires, 56 hand horns. So, yeah, <laughs> quite flexible. Maybe too much. I think sometimes, I think sometimes uh, Mary gets a little bit overwhelmed of all the functionality he can do. <laughs> but you know, maybe programming brain. I do stuff. I try to keep it like simple, but sometimes I might go too far. When making games, uh, you program the systems, but Mary is working on the front end designing the game. Is that how this system is working? Well, I think if we think about like front end, back end kind of mm, like mindset, it's not really how game development works at all. We are only two people in the team, so we have to do like half and a half. Uh, when you have like big teams, you have everything more separated. So for example, content people can work separately from artists and programmers and everyone, and everything is that change, a uh, uh, chain of people working. In our case, everything is more connected because everything that I'm not doing, he's doing it and the opposite. So. I try to create systems inside the engine. So, you know, can you translate all that properly? Yeah, I'm using the built-in system, uh, get text. Um, yeah, it's quite a straightforward. It's officially, mm, you know, in, uh, in Spanish and in English. So, yeah. You also have like in here to generate line IDs, you know, so they add a comment in here just in case you have like these words said by several characters to know exactly which one you can look up in the dialogue which one it is. So yeah. So you make the game and tools for them, like populate the game with data and that kind of stuff. Yeah, indeed. Okay, when the add-on support get text is nice. Yeah, that was one of the reasons why I chose a dialogue manager over a dialogic because dialogic was not supporting get text yet and i wanted to give it a try especially because this one is gonna have fucking loads of text like a lot of it because it's kind of an interactive fiction game so i i wanted to give the tools to the localization team that is not just a csv you know Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal, Premax? ¿Cómo va? What's the name of the game? Works heads. No, that's that's the plugin. <laughs> Dialogue manager is the plugin. So this is the the different sections. So everything is well ordered. We even have like a stickers mini game that I didn't show it to you, but we can place stickers in there in here you can place all of these cool stickers and like play around and print your own flyer and it will get stored 
Gracias, I couldn't tell you were Spanish. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, but I, I'm speaking in English here. My stream is in Spanish, but in here I'm talking in... All the collision shapes look so good. Like full color. Right. I, I have to say that I was tempted to add like some foiling thing, you know? I don't think professional translation companies are happy about CSV. Indeed, I'm not happy about CSV as a translation system for game either, because I think it's quite, I don't know, difficult to manage. So I prefer the, the, the one that is like more standard professional. So for example, in here, if we go to our Poedit, you can see that I already have all like the Spanish translation in here. So all of these, it's not amazing that I don't add a lot of tags for the context, but I would love to do so. Eventually, maybe I start adding like tags so people know who is the one saying the thing, but for now, I think it's amazing, this. Pretty sure every tool to translate stuff can export to the CSP. Yeah, but this one, I think it's way more convenient. Like, you don't have problem with colons or semicolons or whatever you are using uh, for separating the different things. And it's not like this big, with all the tests, you can create the different stuff and I don't know. You don't have all the languages in just one uh, CSV, but you have different dot PO for different languages. And I think it's way more convenient. And this kind of tools like for for edit, it's really convenient to use. You could basically have a job doing like, yeah, but I, accessibility is really important to me. So I wanted to make sure like from the very beginning, everything can be smoothly in different languages. Uh, especially because Mary, he's English speaker and he doesn't know uh, other languages. So if I start translating everything, I will make sure it makes sense in the other language and like everything that needs to be translated it's already connected to that system, you know. Indeed, I created some add-ons, like personal add-ons in here. Let me show you. I have custom local parser, parsers, for example, uh, this one. Every time I create like a file called locale, locale, I don't know how to translate that. This is a GD script it will get all the constant uh, keys in there and will get that to the to the poet uh, the pot uh, things values sorry keys so i don't have to add them manually it's pretty cool how easy to extend the editor's translation parser is so this way, I don't know if you can do that on CSV, but with the get text localization system, it's pretty straightforward. I have a few of them just to... This one, it's because you cannot translate with the automatically, you know, with the project, project settings, uh, uh, da, 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 localization, pod generating thing. You cannot add T, R E S files in here, but I created this small plugin that allows you to append the, the classes I want in here. Que bien, gracias, Claire. Tres igual a tercer. Yeah, but but I can add them in here. It's called like. Tres is text resource. I didn't know that. <laughs> I am just saying every time I'm like developing in my own channel is like tres because it's how you pronounce that in Spanish. And it's also like the number three in Spanish. 
so it's quite funny. Res binary resource, res uh, text resource. I didn't know that. I will keep. Do I have permission to call them tres? Text sync. Oh, okay. I use res a lot. Yeah. I use a lot of like text resources in beer. <laughs> what? Tres. Call it three. <laughs> How is it going? They are telling me what tres means because right now I was just calling them tres. That is also three in Spanish. And I just realized it was test resource and like a send resource and everything. Uh, <laughs> Do I have permission to call it tres right now? Yeah, of course. Tres. Where is it the version controlling pain? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Main 34, main 3, main punto 3. <laughs> hey there, Arian, how you doing? I, I like the 3. It might be official, like calling it 3, like in Spanish. So you can also like count in Spanish up to 3. Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> So I get like dos is deco indeed. It's up there with how to pronounce Godot. It's Godot. Godot. I also say a lot of words like in Spanish, even if they are in English. Like for example, this one would be like animation player. I'm sorry. I'm used to that. <laughs> animation player. So, what else I can show you? Let me, let me show you. Well, we can start like adding the app we were going to add right now. We spent like, the first hour just chatting around. So yeah, I know this game. Bro, bro, are you like a fake Robert Pattinson? <laughs> it's top on each. It's not on each here. But it's like really known in Steam. Have you ever tried the Spanish Godot interface? It's not. I, I don't like having my software in Spanish because of one reason. I like when you can use it in Spanish because, you know, uh, I mean, I like because of accessibility, you know, but when I want to look up how to use something and the documentation, not the official documentation, but maybe like a tutorial around I found on the internet is using the English words, then I cannot like, I have to be translating them in my own game and it's pretty messy. So as I'm fluent in English, I just uh, use it in English and if I have to look up, let's say like project, tools, whatever, Orphan Resource Explorer, it's not like proyecto, herramientas, búsqueda de recursos huérfanos kind of thing. So yeah, that's the reason I use it in English. But I like that the stuff is localized in different languages. So, I have created this mobile phone. Let me check the node. I am not like really proud of how I organize everything in here, but I was learning at the same time I was developing. So yeah, the English version clicks faster. Will Well, at least for me coming from every game app I use, I won't be in English. I never bothered to change the language. Yeah, well, when I started, I think because it detected the, the system uh, language that is in Spanish, as you see here, Búsqueda, it's search. Uh, I think it was in, in, in Spanish by default, and I had to change it. I think if you hit F, so it's a no. Well, I think so. At least it's like that in, in Unity too. <laughs> Let me check. 
yeah it's center more than zooming so we have this app script that has all the different apps that will be available or not in the in the day they are by code all of them so mary can say which ones will be in there or not oh i have this okay this one i can be removed to be honest mine is in spanish like this operative system yeah indeed so we have a new one in here so we can i think we can just uh, duplicate this and change the texture but i don't have the disabled one but i don't mind because it will always be enabled so these are just like uh, texture buttons and i have all the art in here i think so ba -ba -ba. home interface oh shame app in here so i have this sprite i think oh no it's using okay in here and the disabled one in here so yeah here we are maybe i should remove one of them but i guess it's okay like that and it's called let me check oh yes okay oh yes and it's like oh it's such a shame <laughs> how do i put that in here oh it's such a shame oh no <laughs> oh yes good enough i think and this one is like the clicking on that i think oh yes is fine right we can call them oh shame Maybe we can call it Oh Shame. Oh Shame. Oh Shame sounds better, right? Shame.io. Because the. Let me. Uh, this one is the reference of what we are creating. So it's called Oh It's Such a Shame, the internet loudest music blog. So Oh It's a Shame, Oh Shame.com. So Oh Shame. Yeah, I think Oh Shame is the best. So we have this, and this app script, and like the mobile app, it has a, a dictionary of all the apps. That will be available so in here we have dialogue tracker suffering jackbox phonogram and now oh shame oh shame it's called so yeah programmer naming things it, it's not i've not it's been mary the one with this title <laughs> Can't you add a new line? I think you can add new line with code of labels. Yeah, I just wanted to be like, because eventually we will need maybe a second line. Not sure about that, to be honest. Let me put this in a one. Not sure, to be honest. So for now, I prefer like to have them in one line and adding a second line only when necessary. You know? Moncho, uh, are you still there? Moncho, me traes un poquito de agua, porfa. Un poquito de agua ahí. Por aquí. That reminds me of Blasphemon for some reason. Blasphemous is also a Spanish game and it's from a really cool people really close to where I was born. That is called Huelva. And they are from Seville. That is pretty cool to where I got I was born. And they are amazing. In Spanish, they have a really regional accent that is pretty cool. Oh, the shave up name translation. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm translating the, 
the apps indeed. Some of the stuff I think we cannot translate that much. And it's such a shame, to be honest. The Spanish of that game is great. Yeah, it's amazing. So we need this theme, but not in here because this is just the, the phone interface. Saludos desde Málaga. Saludos, Shadow. So in here we have like all the phone interfaces and I created like in here, in the resources, all like the different nodes and stuff. So we have nodes, mobile apps. And in here, if I have a, a scene that uses exactly the same, you know, like name that we have in the bottom, once we enable it, it will look up the scene that goes with that app. That way I have like the same mobile phone, but only loaded the notes that will be using that scene. So I'm really proud of that system, to be honest. It's really flexible. You can enable and disable apps at, even at runtime. So yeah. So maybe I should duplicate one of these scenes just to make sure hidden on hidden. So they'll track a mobile app. Okay, let's create a new one. Let me see where I put this. It has to be disabled. Okay, perfect. So let's create a new scene. Uh, this one has to be, I think it's a texture. So we have this texture and we have the background one. For now, as backgrounds has different like images and stuff in here we are going with this until oh one thing we are doing is like everything is 4k you know uh, keep safe um uh, keep so we have this in here and uh, notes a uh, mobile app oh shame We have this one, uh, let me see this reference one. So we need to create this, I think this text and this text, we have to add it. Oh, I, th I don't know, I can do this with this. Maybe we need this code because if I add like this, this is attached, so yeah, I have to ask him to change it. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Hi, Godot. <laughs> Call me Avocado, please. Okay, so maybe we can cut it ourselves. Clip a studio to the rescue. So let me open it. Mm -mm. One second. So, show. Because I suspect they want like the title to keep on top because otherwise the space to see the news, it's really small. So I think, showing file manager, one second. So we have this and I think I need like the, this different, like in another image. Mm -hmm. I think I can export like just this chop image in here. De alguna manera de comer, ta, ta, ta. Uh, 
Because you see, this is usually <laughs> made by... A ver. I should, uh, I should ask the artist to do this instead of myself. A ver. File. There is a new way. Because I think I can do like a new project from a layer. Nope. There were cool things in the chat. Indeed. I can make the change. You are amazing, Mary. Thank you. Can you give me this separated from the background? I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> Let's start with this. Indeed. You can push the changes when you have them. So we go in here with a UV box container that it's in all the image. Let's put the control like just in here, like the image itself. I think it's better. So here we are. And we have this box container just in here. Okay. So this has to be centered, I think. Perfect. And what else? Okay, let's put like... I don't know if adding... I started using a lot of like... Uh, because I, I've been learning while developing, I started using a lot of like, you know, the way you have to create interfaces. Like, let's say uh, we go with control and margins, mar like margin container and overriding the margin for let's say like a few pixels so i have this margin and then inside all like the another vertical layout blah 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 but then i realized that it was really challenging for mary to do like small changes that were in there and i couldn't see them so i'm starting to be way less strict with how I do all the stuff instead of having like let's say five pixels in on each corner and the stuff like that and now this is slightly smaller but I guess it's like uh, 100 or something like that so in here I have like all my corners pretty cool but yeah, sometimes it's a little bit overkill if I if we are doing menus that are not let's say really like traditional, you know? It's like weird artifacts on your game. It gives a retro vibe to the game. It's like a line that happens sometimes on the screen. I think they will fix it to 4.3. I don't have many of them. Sometimes I have like some weird lines in but Normally, it's when I start messing around with negative margins and stuff like that because I am. I have to admit that sometimes I'm a little lazy, and instead of uh, trying to do stuff as it's supposed to do, I start like adding negative margins and stuff like that if I want to have them <laughs> outside, but don't say anyone. <laughs> Mr. Elliptic, thank you for that ride. Welcome everyone we are developing here. Thank you for coming by. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo va? <laughs> oh, I really love that. Godot Ubu. <laughs> Emoji. So, we have this one. Let's go with this. Like the margin in here let's say the overrides like 50 maybe 
So we have this one and we have this one. That will be slightly where it has to be. Yeah. And now we have uh, here like an edge box container. Let's add here. I think this one we have their own DIM. I'm creating DIMs for most of the apps. Everything is really not organized, but yeah. Does your engine even officially use? It should have. It's an officially you use. <laughs> So ofshame.com, we have to buy the dom that domain. Vamos a ponerlo aquí. Eh, yeah. Text. Let's go with a regular label, I think. Um, eh, ofshame.com. And this will be, oh, this is small. Let's go with a dim in here. Mm -hmm. A ver. I think I have for son of the dang uh, style box, suffering your box. Yeah, let's go. Oh, shame. Do, do, do. Can't wait to, for us to get emotes here. The sheer choices. Yeah, I guess you will have them pretty soon. We are gonna make it possible here, supporting the Godot Engine official channel. I'm really, really happy. You don't know how happy I am that they counted uh, with me, counted on me on a streaming on their own platform. You know, that it's a really cool thing to do like to stream it like you it's really like i feel humbled you know like really cool uh here the date i guess the date will change i guess i will get them yeah i think monday 20th may so we have the two of them let's do this like to, to, to fill oh they're small here so let's do I think the level one like font size I think the font file is gonna be like which one poppins we're using poppins for the the one, so I think maybe the light one. That is too light. Let's see. Setenta. Uh, okay. And the color mm -hmm. Oh god, I feel everything is really disorganized right now. <laughs> so I did develop my game Godot. Thank you very much for the Godot teams of the Tunnel Engine. They are amazing, right? Oh shame in here. So text color. I think it's kind of like a I think it's this one. Let's do that one. It's like, I think it's this one, so maybe that one. Yeah, indeed. 70 was too much. Let's do 60. So, ba, ba, ba. 
Maybe we can do like this to the left and this one aligned to the right and maybe like this to expand. Not sure. Should do the trick maybe the two the both of them makes more sense just in case we add like a third one that it will display in the middle so in here it will be half and half wait you are the good old avocado yeah <laughs> i heard about this on twitter i was confused yeah i'm the first official good old avocado i'm pretty happy of that title <laughs> Avocado time, yeah. <laughs> so let's add a little bit more of margin, like 80, let's say. It's too much, 60. 75. Yeah, sounds almost the same. And maybe they should be a little bit smaller. So let's say 55, yeah, sounds almost the same. So yeah, let's go with this. And this one will be tags, even if we only have the filters one, they will be tags. So we will have this one. I don't know if, uh, if he pushed already. Yeah, I have the changes already. So let's pull them. Okay, now they are separated, so amazing. So now in this B-Box container, we will add a new node that it's gonna be a texture rect. Um, this will be like the logo. And let's find in here the, the logo in here and keep centered so we have this in here it's a little bit like mm, it's a shame but i think it's okay uh, if i want these to override like overlay these these have to be like not inside this container but attached in here you know so i'm not sure i think this one it's okay for now Let's see. We have official NPC, official avocados. What's next? <laughs> the limit is your imagination, you know? You can just like ask. Oh, this line. What's doing in here? Oh, okay. It's the end of the screen. <laughs> Sorry. So we have the tabs in here. Maybe we can add. Because I, I regretted of adding. Let's let me show you the jukebox. So I have the Saffron Jukebox one in here. Good afternoon, how can I change the file colors in the file system? It's already in one of the, I think it's 4.2, they made this official. You can just go in there and set folder color. It's not even a plugin, it's just in there. And you can change it and put the color you want. It's quite useful because sometimes, it, for example, my resources uh, are always the same color, so when I have two different folders with the same name, I know if I'm doing like scripts or resources or stuff like that. Human guacamole. No, it's aguacate, not guacamole. Aguacate, sorry. I forgot about this. Yeah, it's really amazing. So let's see what I would. So in the suffering joke box one, if you see, we have like different tabs. I use it a thumb container that will get all the scroll containers in there, like all the different things and create a tab. But 
I'm not 100% happy about this. You know why? Because of localization. I cannot localize songs and not play them because it won't get them. Like this tab container, I'm not adding the different options by hand. It's automatically added. So now I cannot do this. You can override the tab names in code. Yeah, but I, I was trying to avoid, avoid that. I wanted it to be like, if Mary wants to add a new tab, he can go with that without the need of code because I'm trying to not translate anything on code. So in the moment we have different, let's say, translations and stuff, we don't have to manually change them by code. A sport about that. No, the problem is that they cannot be translated automatically. I have to change them accessing to this tab container thing and I don't want to do that. You see, like it is in the localization, even if they are to translate this song, it's not trying to change the tabs because this tab container, I think is more used to be used when you are generating content uh, on runtime. Instead, you have like the separate tab container that they generated. So maybe I have to investigate the manually way the manual way of doing like the different tabs and assigning them in here instead of making like the automatic one. What you're working on? I'm working in this game. It's called Walks Heads. You have a comment and you can wishlist it. So it's our first commercial game as Patati Games. And I'm working in that. So let's go back. Export is nice to I use it as well. Yeah, I I use it sometimes. I'm just learning, you know, for example, in this other app, I use this tab container. Yeah. So this tab container creates a tab for each child control, but instead maybe we should add a tab bar and then manually add all the tabs so they will be first with localization and maybe it's more flexible if in, if we want to let's say uh, put them in a position and everything let's see i've never used it I, it's the first time i'm using this tab bar so let's see how it goes but then you have to wear the tabs yourself yeah but maybe it's better because we only have these features one in here, all of these will be blank. And I want them to be like localized without the need of code. Because I also want to add like this scene to the, to the, in here, the localization one. Indeed, I can do that right now. So I will go in here with the notes one and then go to the mobile apps one and we have like the oh shame scene, you know, and if we generate the pod, we'll have this and this already to be translated. So I prefer to, if possible, I want them to be automatically translated because if I started doing like translation, like manually translate, then for example, if I want to translate them on runtime and I change the language, they don't get updated unless I connect the change language event. And then I will have a lot, a fucking loads of uh, signals attached to this change language signal. So I prefer if they can be done manually, they will be automatically attached. And I guess uh, this auto translation built-in in Godot will be way more effective than the one I'm doing manually, to be honest. So we have this tab bar. Let's see how this works. So we're in the zero center. Show never. Okay. Max up width, scrolling enabled, drag to rearrange enabled. Mm -mm. Oh, fuck. So we need to clip this. So we have this margin container, but inside this need to be masked. So 
Let's do like a, a mask, I think. How did I do that in Super Inject Box? Sorry. Did I do that? Oh no, it's always on top. It's always on top. Okay, let's do this first. Tap bar. So we have pa 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 layout all to pa pa pa. Clip tabs, you're never max tabs scrolling. Where are they? Select with the right mouse button. Then know this. Rent up one. Okay. Do I have to add like tab containers? No. Do I have to add like the patchy box container ready in here? Like in the bottom. Join here. Okay. Here we have to add a texture. Great. That will be this digi double like rack thing. Ta -ta -ta. Hola Godot Oficial. Hi there, how are you doing? So that bar does literally nothing, it's just special. I think so. Well it has some options. For example, you can rearrange them and like some built-in stuff. I don't know where to add, to be honest, like the different tops. I'm here. <laughs> it was kind of hidden. So we have Features. Then we have Views. Sorry. Then we have Reviews. We have Geeks. Okay. Oh, this is ugly. <laughs> this is really ugly. So let's add a line in here. So I want them to be separated. Let's go to the dim. And let's go to the... What do we have in here? Tops in here. Okay. So let's see. So Horizontal separation, I think it's like 20 maybe, something like that. The font is kind of okay. Let's go to with the bold one. Let's overwrite this one. Not too bold, uh, semi bold maybe. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, so the font size, the same one. All this stuff, I don't think we need it. Ah, we have the button. Highlight. Press disable focus over. Okay. Let's add these lines. I think it's... Let me see if I can adding here like this style no we have to do it manually nice looking graphics thank you everything is because uh, mary indeed mary he's the one do you have to do all the high show yourself if you use the tap or indeed really oh god do i Shh. 
Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. Good enough. <laughs> so let's do this extra box container that is called features. Um, people need to learn English because I'm not gonna localize this. But the thing is, oh, center. Shh, nobody's gonna know. Let go with the spacer, like the edge separator. So we have this uh, duplicate, and we have that in here, and they have this really thin line. Mm. It's taking a like all. Maybe I can instead of going with the fill, let's go with the shrink center, both of them. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Layout shrink center. So here we are. And let's go with how long is this? Let's say minimum sizing. Where is this? 600. No. Mm. Good. 1500. 1500. Hard coded stuff. It's okay. So we have this, and maybe if we add like some in here, it will get. No, the line has the style. Let me change. Maybe I should add the styling here. Let's go to the dim instead of adding them manually. So we have this and let's go with the separator one. So in here, I think if we go to the style box, we can create a new line and we can put that like thickness, let's say five, let's say eight. This artifact is because of like other stuff. So the color will be this one. Good enough, right? Yeah, good enough. So the top one, it will have in the text. This is the bold one. Semi bold. Let's go with the bold one. It's, it's, I think it's ignoring it because I think I have to add that in here to the top container instead. <sighs> so, drop my color from the blind and disable font selected. So we have the font selected that will be white. I think it's white. We have the hover that will be. Maybe this, no, I think, let's go with black. We have the unselected that will be, I think, this color. Yeah. And the disabled, and this one will won't be yet there. So we have news, reviews, gigs. News. Reviews, gigs. I don't know how we are adding these small points in here, but let's see how we do. So we have the temp container. Let's go with the with the style. So we have the tab selected one. That's quite of okay. We want this style board flat that is just this color. Good enough. And we have some margins that will be, let's say, 20. Too much. Uh, so top is 10 and bottom is 10. And let's add to the separator some 
Senpai y canciones similares en Amazon Music. Alexa, cállate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened in there. <laughs> Too much. Uh, Let's go with that. Maybe even less, like 20, like 30. Okay. Let's go in here with 32. I'd like to use like the override because I don't know if the top and the bottom one will be the same. Wanna be helpful, yeah, indeed. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't say that, right? Like, I'm not sure what happened in there. Hmm. Econ separation. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Oh, can I go with a node? Oh, maybe this is. Shh, don't say anyone, okay? So, may I go with a node that has like a point in there and it's disabled? What's about that? What's happening here? Tienes el punto. Shh, nobody's gonna know. Okay. So, what if we have a point in here? that will be disabled so you cannot click them and um, we've been here and in here we cannot have the same name no me gozo en un pozo me gozo en un pozo I guess you, we have to make like separating things in here. Clip tabs, la, la primera es la cero. Clip contents, transform, under sizing, localization, tooltip, focus, mouse. Then override. Maybe I have to add them like in here. I mean, I'm not even sure this is possible. I don't think it is. I will just like go with a like let the space be in here. Maybe I will go with an overlying uh, thing, you know, like a really tricky thing to do, but I can't think of a different solution, you know. Something here in the middle that is overlining because it has like a negative thing and just go in there. So right now it's gonna be all together. Get rid of the tough container. No. No. It's my tough container. <laughs> I want it to be there. I don't want to add stuff. <laughs> I don't want to add stuff on my hand. Mine. So, vamos aquí a ver menú, menú highlight. Maybe we can use like this. Maybe these can be like icons. Let's see. Wait. I'm almost there. No, I can't. This is really tricky. I have to develop like correctly. I, I shouldn't be doing all this. Everyone is watching. I, they are never going to hire me if they think I'm doing all these like tricky things around. I have to be like correct. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hire me ever. 20, 10, 20, 10. So we have the top hover that I think think we can go with a new style box flat that will be kind of similar to this one, but maybe it's slightly darker. So yeah, I think that could make the trick. C 
So like this one, but slightly darker. Let's go with in here. Okay. Or maybe, yeah, I think so. And let's say on the expand margins will be 20, 10, 20, 10. So we have these two style boxes in here. And then the unselected one will be like a MT with the uh, margins, I think. Of 20, 10, 20, 10. Okay, and all of them, I think, they need the extra bold one. So color, content, font, size. Let's go with the uh, bold one, maybe. Yeah, I think good enough. Maybe more separated, right? The Nyapa way. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing that stuff, to be honest. Like, I should be trying to do everything as it's supposed to be. But I'm cr pretty used. The focus, I think if I left that. I don't want them to have navigation, so I guess I can just add the navigation now. Let's see in the Suffering Jukebox how I did that. Unselected, okay, and then the styles. Let's see, I have. Oh, the disabled, okay. Focus panel, oh, this are empty. Okay, so this is empty, this is empty, and this is empty. And the disabled one will be the one, the same than unselected, okay. So this one will be this one. Okay. Do you have the separation in here? No. Nope. They don't. So, let's Content margins, expand margins, let's say 20, 20. No, it's not expand margins, but content margins, it's not this either. Hmm. I think this is the best I can do with this tricky thing going on. If I want them to be like different, I will have to rearrange stuff. So this will work for now. When is CSS for Godot coming? That would be quite, I don't know. It won't help me that much in here, to be honest, because this UI is really like cartoony and not regular Godot. UI, it's, it's amazing if you, if you are doing like stuff that look really like a UI, like computer UI, but it's not that amazing to for doing these cartoony kind of things. I have realized that it's a little bit limited when coming to these kind of UIs. Sometimes I even use uh, 2D sprites if I'm doing like some really placing stuff in manually on corners and stuff because this can be a little bit overkill sometimes. Vamos con... Let's go with the edge box container and we will add this brook. Um, so we have the app. I think it's called dialog uh, here. So the brick dog one, let's go with a, a texture effect and let's go with this texture. 
this will all be like dynamic, you know, so I don't worry that much about everything in here. So we have this one and the, uh, maybe the title we can, instead of doing like rich text, I don't think, what should we do, like rich text or... I think we are going with the edge box, like the V box container. And I think we are expanding this one. And adding two different labels. We are changing into rich text label just in case we need them. So we have this and we have this and let's go with a Let's try with the actual test, test because, you know, like if we already have them, why not using it? I have everything in here. Oh, a lot of stuff. That's pretty cool. So, break dot break up. And then we have this. Let us know in the comments. So we have all of this amazing. For the smart, amazing thing. Okay, this one will be keep fit with. We oui, sorry, uh, keep aspect. Okay, so we have this in here. I'm not sure if we wanted it to go like with the flow. Oh, that would be quite cool, right? Like. Having a flow one with all the text wrapping in here, but I'm not sure I can do that. I'm not sure how that. Let's see if I can change the type to a flow container like this one. And let's have this one like not going all the way down. I never done that, so. Mm. No. <laughs> no, that was not a good idea. Uh, what kind of game? Uh, the the demo is already on Twitch. Do you like to talk to yourself while you work? I do that sometimes when I make problems of issues. I think I stream that much uh, how my, de my development is going that sometimes I feel I'm talking by myself even when I'm solo developing in my house, you know, just because I'm really used to understand. Like, it's like an automatic thing I do, like just Talk about the development. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So let's go with this that will have like the font override. We'll have the uh, font sizes. Is this like the gray or is this black? I think this is black, right? Why? This is not black, right? Oh, but this is even... Ah, all the... Okay, this is the font color, not this one. Okay, let me change that in the DM so we don't have to manually change all of them. So we have this level... Da, da, da. We have this... Da, da, da. Where is this theme? Theme... Oh my... Shame. So in here. Oh, they don't have color. Amazing. El color del label va a ser, uh, the color of the label will be this one. Okay. It's still black. I think it's not. 
I hear, sorry. Is it this? <laughs> Maybe it's just the weight of the of the font. So let's go with For this we are going to use the bold one or maybe even the extra bold. Not sure. The override the fonts here. Okay, on the size let's say 70. 120. 110. Yeah, something like that. I'm curious, can you make components in Godot? Do they have to be individual notes attached to a parent note to replicate that kind of composition parlor? Uh, every note can only have one component, like a, like a script on them. You cannot have like multiple uh, scripts on a node. That's really like Unity-like thing. Can you add the image to the rich text using BB code tags? I might can, but I think it's not gonna align. I think if I do that, this text will be just in here. So you know, like the text in here and going in here. So as a note, you can only do one thing. Yeah, that's right. I like it because it makes me think in a more component approach than having these like build, big monolithic things that might happen when you are like learning how to use Unity, for example. So we have the phone. Maybe, maybe we can use let's say the bold one to old maybe we can use the regular one i think that's better but it's not mm. what are you what are you I know I should ask. <laughs> I know I should ask Murray, uh, Mary, uh, about like the fonts and the stuff he's using. But you know, I I don't usually do that. I just go and try to find out what he's doing, like in the other image. To be honest, let's see if maybe. I'm... Yeah, okay, there you are. There you are. Like this note does this thing, uh, and this note does this one thing. You can put the second level in a scroll container. We are not scrolling these, but we are scrolling all of this, I think, because if I think, like, I'm not sure how, because it depends on what uh, Mary wants. If he wants everything to be like a scroll, so I'm just like, putting them on top instead of centered, you know, like this is just being centered, but instead I can just attach this in there and cut, mask, you know, everything and put like a scroll in here. Or maybe he want to only scroll the tab. I'm not sure what he wants. So yeah. That doesn't cause any memory issues. What? Uh, it can be a simple one now, so you have to complete one. I love the notes of script. No, uh, Godot is quite cool as managing, you know, a lot of uh, uh, notes at the same time. It's prepared to do that kind of, st of tasks, to be honest. And when I was learning Godot, I was a little bit concerned about uh, like creating many nodes and just going with a lot of something that is really difficult for Godot with the memory and everything. But 
Then I realized you can spawn a lot, but a lot of nodes, and it works smoothly. I think in a few minutes, Mary is joining. Let's see. I will try it. Okay. Notes are cheap to hop. It was expensive if you keep adding, removing to the tree in bulk in runtime. Yeah, indeed. Today I learned that it was way better to add the notes to the current scene tree, scene tree, tree scene, scene tree. Uh, using the effort, I didn't know. That's a cool thing about learning a new engine that you are learning almost every day new stuff. Hmm. I think I'm adding this scroll. This scroll container in here, to be honest. So, what is the features? Features, features. Logo tab container here. So features. This is here. Um, this is here. This is here. And this is expanding. Um, okay. ¿Cuánto tiene que tener esto? This is disabled. That zone layout. Pa pa pa. Okay. Expand. Perfect transform. So minimum size, let's say 800. We oh, sorry, 800. I think that's good. Yeah. Sometimes I feel it has to manage with so many scene tabs that break down into granular packet scene. Well, you have to just like try to think how you're going like it makes you think in more component approach you know complex component could be a special progress bar for your game with a special effect computer yeah i'm coming from a game object point of view yeah i i had to change like everything i was uh, doing i don't really like how this is going in here to be honest this one Oh dear, yeah, of course. Hmm. Fuck. I hate the tough container. I don't know why I'm using it. I, everything was going smoothly, like doing my own tab, and now I cannot do all this stuff. I will have to add everything in my hand. Okay. Let's remove the bottom one. Let's go with this one. And maybe we can add one under like no i can't for an ipod <laughs> Today's takeover? Okay, perfect. So let's see if we can do something to fix it. So 
So if we have here like uh, B box, and then we go in here with this, and it's called features. And this go inside. And we have the separator in here. This will work. And this has to be here. I don't need these features anymore. Okay. They should work. I don't know if they want these to be like all the scrollable part of Node. Let's say it's like this. Okay, in five minutes, Mary is joining. And if you have any design-wise question, you can just ask him because he's the one that did all the art and like the puzzle designs and everything in there. So let me call him. Let me put the music out and like quit some stuff in here. Music is out. Okay. So, Mary, if you are in there, I have a question now. Yeah, sure. How do I get <laughs> good at drawing? <laughs> okay, so, hey there, how are you doing? Hello, am I in? Yeah, I think so. Let me quit because I have like some compressor going on. Let me fix it. Compressor. Okay, so in here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I think you're in. Let me go with the camera so they can see your face too mm -mm. maybe you can see the scratch that my son, one of my sons just gave me in my face okay i think you're in i'm in yep oh i'm struggling a lot with these like tab things they are not as flexible as i wanted to you know so i'm struggling with adding these small like points in the middle. I will eventually get there, I promise. <laughs> I mean, you're the expert. I have no idea. Like, I just pick a button and then magic happens, so... <laughs> yeah, okay, like... Uh, do you want to say hello to all the amazing Godot community that is around? So I feel like, you know, I'm like 50 years old, I was waving my hands around, like, hello, hi, hello. <laughs> Sorry, I, but... yeah, I was, I was watching some of the stream uh, to begin with, but uh, it was really lovely just seeing everyone engaged and watching the stream. And, yeah, right. Uh, being super really? friendly, so yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's it's amazing. So, hello and yeah, thank you. Really. So, <laughs> mm. so I was I have a question like design wise because I am doing only this scrollable, but maybe you were thinking of doing all the like all the page and not just like these bottom part i think maybe all the page right like it was more yeah because i think um you don't want it yeah i was thinking the whole yeah page. say it i will change yeah yeah, yeah. i'm already love your artist right. style alexander you can read the chat right yes i can i put that i put the thing up i'm i'm being hip and technical and okay almost... then i can like just <laughs> rest That's very, my very yeah. <laughs> sorry uh trying to do talk uh uh being um yes thank you so much for the um uh, all the uh, lovely comments about the art. It's it's been like a long journey. I've been kind of before me and Ruthie always started working in this. I kind of was thinking about the art style for wax heads for maybe about a year before starting like actual development on it. So it's um yeah, it's been marinated in my brain. But I'm I'm also happy about. It. I'm really happy that people would like it because I also strangely enough for oh, I also like it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. You know. I think you already I know. Program, so. <laughs> I think this should be working right now, but I'm not sure. So I, I don't know if I can do like this going in this 
please. Yeah, I would have tried. I put that in there as a challenge, being like, you know, you know, yeah. some word formatting. Uh, true. I might need to. Um, I might. Need I will to, try to make because you were thinking of doing this in this in here, right? Mm. I guess. We like can a. Do... We can yeah. do some trick. We can do some, um, you know, we can just oh, get off the localization. Um, no, we could do a thing where we just have like the title and some like blurb be in the first bit, which goes to join with the um, illustration. And then we can have the body of the text go underneath. Hmm. And then I'll just do enough space, even with localization, it will still hopefully not like it won't be okay. too. Uh, okay, let me try something. You can give like. Uh, People with the Rochiquilla estamos contigo. <laughs> I keep receiving like a lot of Spanish, uh, like cheering up messages. I feel like really blessed about that, to be honest. <laughs> I really need to learn Spanish. Yeah, you totally need to. I'm gonna uh, teach your small kids, you know, the Spanish, and they will teach you, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, they've got they've got more they've got more of a, a shop, so um, that's uh. I have more hope for them learning Spanish than me, even though I technically need it more than they do right now. So, <laughs> uh, just making sure I didn't miss any questions. So, I tried different yeah. weird stuff. So maybe it's just like a messy thing and trying, but I'm just like messing around. Um. So, Alexander, um, is my accent Scottish? Yes. I mean, well, I hope it is. I grew up in Glasgow, <laughs> so I am Scottish, but um. I lived all over the UK, so my accent's like a mongrel, so it's very, depending who I'm talking to, it will fluctuate. But I am, I am Scottish, and some of the, uh, I tried to put some Scottishness into um, wax heads. For anyone who <laughs> is, you know, local to Scotland, there's a caramel wafer reference in the game, which to me is very important. If no one's tried a Tonic's caramel wafer, uh, it's it's a, a great chocolate bar, so. <laughs> <laughs> not don't know why I'm trying to endorse a, a big conglomerate uh, chocolate bar, but yeah, it's it's nice. It's better than Mars there and were, Nestle, whatever I do. There are people like I think uh, British people asking me like, oh, the the chocolate bar is whatever you know, a, a reference of whatever, and I'm like, I'm not sure. Like I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> but they were like really excited about the reference, so I told I told mm. them like. Yeah, of course it is. Like, I'm totally sure. It's a reference of something. So I guess if you have it really, really clear in your head, I, I think it's because it's that yeah. one, you know? But yeah. It's whatever you want it to be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah, indeed. Well, the actual chocolate bar now in the game is a reference to The Replacements, which is, like, one of my favorite bands. Um, in fact, there's a few... It's, it's, uh, there's a, they've got a song called um, Favorite Thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the chocolate bar, if I remember, like, I like that I'm not even remembering my own references. I think the chocolate bar is called Favorite Thing. Yeah, it's called Favorite Thing. It's called Favorite Thing. It is, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I draw things and then I forget what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> so you're beginning, you're mentioning all the details and things that you, you don't see every time. And I'm like, it feels like to me, I'm also seeing them for the first time. Because a lot of it I think of in the moment and then I forget that I had the idea <laughs> and then <laughs> and then the gate going like oh yeah like I did I guess I drew that or yeah <laughs> um, so I tried something in here like I'm not sure if it's working but I think it is let's see um so right, Alexander exactly exactly like that what did I draw <laughs> Let's make yeah exactly it. like that you can study yeah. oh this is bad Yeah, it's nice to nice to be in a uh, Godot. I I don't Godot engine official. Is that Nat? Yeah, she she's yeah, okay, not. Great. Yes, okay, perfect. Yeah, just didn't want to like <laughs> be you know. Hello, Godot. Uh, what can I just uh, um can I just um ask is what is the official pronunciation of Godot? Was it Godot? <laughs> I I say it in Spanish. You are. <laughs> I, I think it's dope. You I, have I, opened I, a I, box that you I didn't like want to open. Or dough, right? Like it's. So that's the way I think of it. Like you know, like I, I've always thought there was a, a pun or a joke on. Yeah, we probably shouldn't really 
it's probably controversial to try and say exactly <laughs> what the pronunciation is on the official Godot channel. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to quote Amy, everyone says it differently and that's beautiful. I totally agree with that. I, 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 I say Godot because it's yeah. Spanish, you know. And yeah, I like I to go with this. I always say Godot. To me, like when I was amazed, at least everyone was saying it. Like I was the only one saying Godot, and I started getting that kind of like, you know, like, oh no, maybe, I'm, oh. <laughs> maybe I'm the wrong one. Uh, okay, no, what I, is I, I was great. okay. I didn't know that. I also had multiple. Pre See, this is me just being British and horrible, and just thinking, no, the way I'm saying it must be the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So. Um, oh, the juiciest of questions, Yavi. Um, what about your sister? Tell us everything about the band, sister. Uh, <laughs> I can actually. Um, uh, so, yeah, like um, a lot of the bands um, in the game, I try to, when writing it, I try not to be one to one with a reference um, because then, you know, I think if it's just art based on one band, it's just kind of weird to like mimic it and then you know maybe for like one for one pun or something like that but so generally um uh sister is a combination of my it's my kind of love le love letter to a bunch of um uh especially female leading if not um predominantly female like um related like post-punk bands like there's a band called priests um a band called pill uh a band called big joni in the uk um and uh mannequin pussy uh, so I hope that's not, that's the name of the band or feminist bands, but I don't know if that would get in trouble for saying that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but the, all of these, all of these bands, are uh, like, it's kind of a combination of like those kind of bands. Um, <laughs> they're a really good band. I can't, yeah, I don't know how else to, um, Daisy wouldn't let me wear the, uh, the, the t-shirt anymore. Cause even though that I know they're a really good band and they're feminist, it just looks awkward seeing like, you know, a man in his mid thirties, like, you know, in a, a play park with the kids with a t-shirt like that it's like it's too much to explain so um <laughs> anyway um sister is kind of my homage to all of these um bands because i kind of love them and uh i like you know the kind of messy nature of that a lot of them have tried walking the line between being um uh walking walking the line between being like you know it's i think for a lot of any post-punk punk band of trying to be like hey you know you're yeah, you make these albums and you're kind of you've got your niche but then when you try to go more mainstream and then it gets you know under a lot more scrutiny i think that's kind of the the sister uh, arc at the moment and it's it goes on from there as a whole journey in the game so that's me getting way too into my own rabbit hole there but hopefully that i don't know <laughs> just, <laughs> you're just saying controversial band names for no reason uh but it's because, you know, like, sisters, I think I already told you, but there is a Spanish mm. band of two sisters, mm. okay, that they were really, like, they, everyone, they were so famous in Spain that, it, and she, they sang in English, so it was really weird to see, like, a Spanish band singing in English, and uh, they were really popular within, like, the more rock community because it was this kind of, like, really... A classical rock punk yes. thing, yeah. but then, in I think it was their third album, they changed to a pop, really weird pop thing, and they were versioning their songs from the very beginning, and they become this kind of pop disco kind of thing, and everyone was like really like either loving or hating them, so <laughs> everyone in the Spain community. Uh, the Spanish community, when I was showcasing the game, they were like, whoa, a double reference, because they, they really thought it was like those Spanish sisters that were really hard rock, and then they changed to be like really pop music. Even like the albums were kind of semi, <laughs> you know, so it was like... And also Dover has an album called Sister. I didn't even knew, knew that, but yeah. Indeed. <laughs> wow. And apparently they have an album called Sister. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> maybe you, maybe, you know, like. Wow. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe subconsciously I just, you know, 
and that's the fun thing about music where I think there is so much uh, of originality and like overlap of just repetition just kind of baked in that it, it even if you don't know stuff I think you can find things familiar without even meaning to and also hi to Emmy who just said oh hello uh, hey there nice <laughs> I always like I I always say I'm I'm you can tell that I'm more um like a newbie with it which because I'm like it's nice to see you and I'm like well I can't you know um <laughs> but uh was a question is there going to be a boss fight in this game and um not I mean although Rafael did say that she wanted to make fifty mini games so I mean <laughs> uh well I can make up loads of them you know like one game each day, like, I can de deploy them. <laughs> I'm going to regret that, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. Right well, I'm already <laughs> regretting starting a fight in the uh, G uh, Godot, Godot community. Uh, so... <sighs> <laughs> um, here in Tuscan, there's a record store that looks just like Waxhead's building interior. That is very, very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's weird because, um, I had, I had a favorite, um, record store, um, but now that I live in Nottingham, so I've lived in Nottingham now for the last two years, my, the one I go to is Rough Trade, which is, um, like it is still technically like, you know, a kind of like a boutique basement. I mean, I really like Rough Trade, I'm going to come out and say it, but it is also kind of franchising, so... It's not probably actually the most ideal reference for wax heads, so I have to probably try a bit harder and find my more boutique stores in mm. Nottingham. Uh, yeah, best of all, I mean, like I love, I love magic. I, I love what uh, record stores because to me they are places of magic. Like I love going into a record store, and um, you don't have to even really know much about music. The idea of just these physical things that you can pick up and look like um uh I just really love that whole like um uh, process. Uh my favourite record store is in London. It's one called uh, uh Flashback Records. It's um in the, the hipster part of uh London in um and like did a, you like, oh in fact Rithio I think you went there. Yeah I indeed all the records I have like in here we're both in there and I yeah. didn't know and it was I remember telling Mary like oh we have been in a record store that looks a lot alike <laughs> the game and it was actually one of the record store he yeah. uh, he was based in you know so it yeah. was quite cool to <laughs> totally accidental you know <laughs> uh, that, that is a really cool record store I mean all record stores are cool I'm going to regret saying that. All record yeah. stores without me on, yeah. Unless they're <laughs> evil. Um, have I had the I game idea for a long time? Um, like, well, basically, I've won. I, I really like, you know, I've um, played in bands and I've, you know, I've, I love going to gigs. I've always been like a big music fan. And, um, uh, I was working on this other music game called uh, Dead Pets Unleashed when I used to work at a studio called Triple Topping and that was really uh, like fulfilled, it was kind of like scratching this itch of like, I want to make a game about music but then um, me and my wife we had twins and I moved back to the UK and then I had this kind of like you know oh I wasn't working on the project anymore and you go well how do I how do I get back into it? like I was trying to think of like obviously you can't just replicate the exact same game that I was working on so um uh, I was thinking, I was playing uh, Wilmot's Warehouse, which is a great game, and as I was playing it, I was like, imagine if all of these were um, records, and then that could have got the whole thing started of going, oh, like, you know, this is uh, this is really cool, and then I, as a designer, I realized I don't have the brain or programming um, aptitude to make <laughs> procedural generated, um, I was like, I like this idea of a record store, but this mechanically doesn't work, so then I started focusing more on the um uh storefront idea like kind of like papers please um uh line and then really for it's been for about a year before me and Rafael met and started working on it I had like um 
I had like basically because I was also at the time applying for like um, UI jobs. So I started doing UI tests of the game before actually having any design tests. So it's like, <laughs> this is what the interface might look like. I don't know if the game is terrible, but the interface looks cool. Um, so I was working <laughs> on that for a bit. And then um, yeah, just before me and Rafael started working together, I did a Twine uh, prototype, which is actually still on my itch. Uh, oh, you know that I... someone recommend like recognized the game because it was uh, on Ichio. So I guess it was your prototype in nice. there. Like I guess because it's getting a lot of traction because of the wax heads. People are looking for wax heads, yeah. so they go to the prototype. Maybe you should add like the Steam page in the prototype. That's a good idea. That, that, see, that's very smart. Yes, I should definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, indeed, because I guess a lot of people is going there instead of going like to the wish list and we need more yeah. wish lists. Wish yeah, lists. yeah, yeah, exactly. Going, oh, this game Wax Heads. Okay, this is weird twang. Uh, okay. um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should definitely, I should definitely do that. Uh, what a good idea. <laughs> this is my good teamwork this is how the teamwork works um but yeah uh so yeah yeah i definitely had the idea for a for a, a little a little while but it's also i mean it's a magic of working with someone so then working with theo like you know going from a kind of idea i had it's now something which actually tangibly works in his business you know actually has a a feeling of a physical place and a way of actually interacting. And that's it's really through the the power of iteration and actually being able to like doing all, all the things that feels like all these tools and systems of things that she's showing on stream and like right now having that um ability to actually play around in the space is what um makes the game actually come to life rather than something which is a bunch of like written paragraphs by me where you know I'm like well in theory if this like I mean, I've got like a game design document, a bunch of ideas where it's like, hey, um, <laughs> in theory, these if these games work like they do in my brain, they should be like amazing. But there's a difference between having that in a piece of paper and then you know, actually seeing it play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do -do -do. That's really kind. Thank you, uh, Mellow Sprite, for uh, for that. Um, yeah, like we're, we're we're planning to keep the demo up as long as uh, possible. So, but uh, we're really really grateful for all the response to the game so far. It's been really nice. Um, how many years are you get into development? Well, we've only been developing since October. Me and mm -hmm. Rafael, uh, I I did one month. Here's a funny Godot fact. So I spent one month of um, <laughs> I spent one month. <laughs> in September of going like the whole Unity debacle happened and then I was kind of like I was at that place where I wanted to start working in wax heads and I thought Godot now's the time and um uh, actually I used to share an office with um with Remy who's someone who uh, works within Godot and like, he was always recommending it so I was like okay I'm gonna do it and I spent this month and like I really I got the hang of the interface and that was really great but the and I, I liked you know like it wasn't like that I couldn't get to grips with it, but it was going slow, like really, really yeah. slow. And I thought... I'm happy okay. that happened, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, more like, I mean, I mean it, was, it would have been stupid anyway to try and be like, you know, doing everything on my own. I mean, so it would have taken like 10, 20 years. And even then, it wouldn't be good as, as good as it is now. So um, I asked, <laughs> reached out to um, a mutual friend of me and Rafael and said like, hey, you know, um, what originally was, can you find me someone to, to teach me Godot. And me and Rafael had this one meeting, which is really, uh, which, which is great. We hit it off straight away. And I was like, okay, this is great. Um, I really feel like this is someone who's gonna like, help me. And then, you know, shortly after that, it was like, well, what if, you know, what if instead of like teaching me to work in Godot, Rafael just like worked with me on the game. So we only had this one meeting where, you know, I basically asked for like, you know, one hour Godot lessons a week. And that changed to, hey, what instead of, you know, teaching me, you just worked on it? <laughs> Which is yeah. not a slightly, <laughs> slightly uh, crazy thing to uh, proposition to someone, but... <laughs> well, I was totally in because, first of all, I, I got along with you uh, really well. Like, it was really nice talking with, uh, uh, with Mary. We got along really good. We were aligned of what kind of game 
would be really cool. Uh, I played the Twine uh, prototype and I fell in love with like, I could totally see how that could be like a quite good interactive uh, game, you know, not just like a story going on, but something that you can like play around and be, uh, you know, discovering and learning how everything goes on. And the art was so amazing. I even, like, the other day I, I, I played the prototype again and, oh God, it has improved a lot. Like, it, I really, if I was in love with the style uh, when I played the Twine version and I could see a whole game with that art, right now the game art is like 10 times better. It doesn't make any sense how much you how much personality you have put in all the game assets and really happy everyone in all the events we go uh, they are like just admiring everything and it's like i can see like their faces when they discover it, not the artist you know like oh you are the artist not the programmer oh and it's like come on <laughs> well, <I> mean... <laughs> You're so mean because I mean, like, because like, it, like, I remember, um, I mean, this is me and Rathiel's so, whole uh, way of, we, we do, um, like, complimentary uh, warfare, we're just constantly just complimenting the other person. I recommend it, like, it's the be it's been the best way to, to work. Um, like, I went to, uh, the very first time in the public, I went to a game, uh, event in Guildford, Guildford Games Festival, and I was so, after working in games for like six, seven years, I couldn't believe I was just waiting for all the bugs. And there was like no bugs like there was nothing people were just playing for the demo all the way through and the yeah. whole time i kept being like did you did you fit because you know they're like i'm sat on a table and they're there in front of me and i'm like did, did you finish it like yeah i'm like like <laughs> but what what's got this is magic like this is like sorcery so um yeah with theo's um programming is just like <laughs> it doesn't make any sense like i have to say like i uh, i i was even concerned like there were no bugs you know what I mean? Like sometimes <laughs> when you like go uh, to events, you expect like a lot of unexpected bugs, you know? So the first time the game was showcased, it was in the UK and it was Mary's in there. So I was like really concerned, like looking the phone, like every five minutes, just like really, okay, if something is broken i have to run to the computer try to replicate it try to fix it and instead of that it's just like everything went smoothly like we had a small like panic episode at the very beginning you know because i i was not like i i thought vulcan was more a standard and i'm using forward plus for forward plus uh, as a rendering thing so i was really mm, i didn't know that some people needed like the gpl uh, like compatibility mode so i just had to add some steam things like to make this selector at the very beginning and you can choose if you are using vulcan or the compatibility mode but other than that i think everything went like pretty smoothly like not a single bug i mean we we had was it we were literally about to announce Wax Head for Steam and put the uh, demo out, and then the uh, <laughs> and then we had this like big of the video card, and I was like freaking out, like going like, oh my god, like oh no. And the thing, you, what you fixed it in like what, twenty minutes? <laughs> like, it was just yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah, I just did a thing. It's fine now. Test it out, and it just worked. And I was like, <laughs> okay. yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's. Yeah. Like, I mean, sure, just, you know, like, just like, like, just like. I think it's just good all that everything is like, uh, uh, maybe I'm used like to making everything over complicated because I have been working with Unity a long time and every time you have to make like one small change, you have to go over uh, loads of classes that are related between them and everything. And in here I'm going like, because I was learning at the same time, I kept it really simple. You know, and I think it's really one of the way to go. Like, keep it really simple. Try or not to over engineer. Try to keep everything functionally separated, but without thinking of this method can receive any kind of 
thing and it will be used, reused for like a hundred of new components and like a real complicated thing. And instead of that, I try to go to the simple thing. And I think that makes, makes the game way more solid and easy to iterate in than a really complex structure. Hmm. I mean, everything you said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it um, works, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I mean, like, look, I, I, the game works. I get to just draw, <laughs> perfect. Um, I was just going to go back. I just saw that um, Alexander asked if um, we were in the same town or reconnected with Discord, and I thought it was just to this point out that, um, that you're in Madrid and I am in um, Nottingham. So, yeah, we are, mm-hmm. we, we are, like, the proving that Brexit, that, you know, that wasn't completely final that there is some collaboration still between you know the uk and uh european countries so yay <laughs> uh but yeah so because um it was through yeah so every, like, we basically everything's through discord is how we are but i mean it's easy it's easier when you're on when you're such a small team it's much easier that way than um i've worked in teams up to like 10 people and then that gets a bit more you need some kind of structure to be like okay what is everyone doing when there's just two of you, it's just like, well, I'm doing this. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Do. People get really like, what the fuck? When uh, when they know that we meet like maybe once a month. Like, yeah, sure, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's like once a month, all the time we are just like updating by text and we have yeah. our own pace and we are yeah. working almost like in a parallel way, you know, yeah. like every day. What? should I prioritize? And he said, what well, should we prioritize on their side? And the opposite, like, I'm just like asking him what would be more useful that I have first. And then both of us create like the the path to arrive to the same point at the same time in parallel. So we don't have like a lot of meetings. Why, why should we have like lots of meetings if we can just like keep working at that time, you know? Mm. Uh, so yeah, if I need uh, Mary to jump in the stream to give some advice, maybe with like let's say margins or like for example this one, I couldn't wrap uh, the image to the text, so I do this thing. If he was not in the call, what I would say it's like if he can jump, I just show him what I'm doing and like get my okay. But if not, I'm just like sending him a few pictures and it's like option A. This option B, this. Uh, let me know what I, what we should do. And he's taking all the decisions in there, and it's working smoothly. I I don't think, and that's one of the reasons we want to be like just the two of us, uh, like in the core team, because otherwise we would have to uh, communicate with a lot of people, and I think that will slow down all the process. And we really like like having everything like fast and like aligned. So yeah. Yeah, and like I mean, for any just start on off the back of that, I think one thing I've definitely learned, especially working with Theo on Waxheads, is that um trust is such like an overrated uh uh not not overrated, underrated. Underrated, that's my point. It's a very underrated um quality because um I think especially like you no know, taking the idea that, you know, this is an idea that I brought to Theo, like there could be a situation where you um in like everyone has different working ways and thing ways of how they approach projects, but the idea of like the micromanaging to be like you know I trust is over there. Oh no, what oh, they've no. done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Nothing happened. Like, don't look at this. Nothing it's, happened. It, exactly, it's trust. You, you put like uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's but, gonna be all right. Don't, don't worry. But, but I think you like uh exactly the situation is this. You trust broken. Yeah, I mean uh. Shh. Oh no, it's all like I love that I was trying to make this like a beautiful, eloquent point and it's just all completely <laughs> trash. Um, no, uh, no, no, trust. Trust is um because I think, you know it's easy I think the thing is it's easy to say it but not to to mean it. And I think that's the thing which I've why working together with Theo has been such a good experience because really enacting in that the idea of like, you know, Theo saying, oh, I'm doing this thing, I'm doing that in you know or like out she calls it filling in the gaps in my design because out you know as a designer i'm like an artist first like you know maybe mm-hmm. writer second designer third so with my design a lot of the times i have the big 
macro idea of like I want to do this and I'll kind of pitch to Rathio and Rathio will try and make it and then there'll be like you know 20 30 possibly more edge cases and problems with that idea yeah so then it uh what's great is then there's that idea of trust of like the idea of the is like well I've got the the idea let me now and then she'll go to me like like this is had you had your concept you had this I've taken it in this direction what do you think and then it's just it's just very freeing to just be like, yeah, I trust you. I think that's that sounds good. So, I mean, it's worked so far. So, um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we make the rest. It's working the for now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? So, if you want, uh, like, maybe people are wondering what I'm doing, like, how can I have a little accident and like that? So uh, I'm just like creating the like the node that will be the news because I don't want them to be a static. So I created like a new node uh, with all like this news uh, skeleton, and I will fill them with a resource. Uh, I work a lot with resources because that initialize with different stuff because I think it's a really easy way. Uh, for Mary to work, for example, in here in resource, they have, he has all the characters and they have like, let's say, let's get Tony because it's the one with the expressions. We have this faceless, let me put this in here. We have this faceless Tony uh, as the base character. Then we have like all the expressions that will be uh, a different uh, resource with all like the anime, uh, like the sprite sheets. And then we will have like the nickname, the lettering sounds. We are not using that, but if you want a character to sound different, they can have like different lettering sound that will go with uh, a little bit of like up and lower pitch to make it less, you know. Then we have the face offset that is like where in the face will be uh, the the face. Okay. And uh, the Instagram handle, just in case they put like a phonogram handle. It's called Instagram, but sorry, but it's phonogram, okay? Like, okay, don't, don't tell <laughs> Meta. I think it's called, yes. it's by Meta, right? Yeah. And this is like all the avatars that are right now. If they add like a new one, I will use that one if they make the phonogram thing. So yeah, that's the system so every time he wants like to add a new character and like just to use them in the dialogue manager and looking in these resources folder to get everything so for example we have this hank but then we have this hank employee i don't know why <laughs> why don't we have like hank, hank, hank employee uh mary uh <laughs> a very good question uh, <laughs> what's happening here <laughs> what's happening oh, I, here i know i know i know so i think that we might have made a hank like ages ago but then he wasn't in the the demo and then when i remade it when i put it into the demo i probably made a new hank without realizing that we already had a hank. so I'm gonna kill this you Hank. You never have too much Hank, I think. You can never I'm gonna have kill much. this for character, and sorry. He's gonna die. I hope this was not the good <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm gonna look at it going like, wow, you're the. <laughs> so, yeah, we have all like in here, like this is the Tony expressions that are all of those, and if he uses one of these like names in the dialogue manager, it will take all these uh, animations in here. So everything is like really connected and quite straightforward, you know? So in news, for example, I'm gonna to create a new resource that are news. Uh, okay, I need to give a, a class name. And now he can fill all the information with the image and everything. And that day, in the working day, there will be a new that will be added in here. So yeah. Q3 from one. Yeah. Well, I like breaking a stuff because every time I break something, I rebuild it 
better. So that's my way to go. Don't feel afraid of breaking stuff because if you have to redo that, it will be better improved. So break everything. I completely disagree when it comes to art. <laughs> 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 Try not to break all the art. I, yeah. And then if you have to redo it, then it's really annoying. So, well, uh... <laughs> well right now I, I teach. Oh, what one thing we really do, it's like, He's also using the engine and he is using GitHub. So we, he's one of these artists that is not afraid of pulling and pushing on GitHub. So I'm really proud of him. Like literally, and not even like just putting the, the, like the images in there, but also with the imports and everything. So he's actually putting the art inside the engine uh, for me to use. So. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do I use the terminal with Git? No, you don't. No, I was going to say no. I don't. I don't think so. It sounds terrifying. No. No, no, no. no. I, I, he <laughs> uses he uses GitHub uh, desktop. Yeah, different the one. My brother is so scared of Git. Well, I think he trusts that I can. Well, sometimes he has messed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we had that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, like. He he was like, I think I did something, and, and he pushed all the diffs in there, and I was like, oh god, what, <laughs> what he have done? And I saw all the diff, uh, like his local diffs, in all like the resources in there, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> because he had a conflict, and instead of solving it, he was like, okay, now it's Rocio issue. <laughs> Like, push everything, like, with all the text, with the divs in there and everything. And it was like, oh, God. <laughs> but I could solve it. Just once. Just once. I, I just right. solved the things. Like, it was okay. Like, yeah. uh, I, like, I don't know. Like, I prefer you to, like, mess around with some stuff now and then than actually using, let's say, a Dropbox folder and I have to take all of them and I don't know which one you change it and everything. I am the kind of person that thinks that artists, all the artists involved in the game need to use the control, the virtual control. Like, otherwise you have a really bad bottleneck mm -hmm. in the programmer side. Like, I'm completely in that team, to be yeah. honest. But I mean, especially for such a small team, right? For like, yeah. two, uh, in all serious, I mean, because there's also with because of the way we're even making the game, like you know, like we say, it's been from October, and I'm a re really big thing of iteration, especially a game like this with like the writing, uh, the puzzle design, like the the game feel, like there's so much of it which is um, reactive, and because of the systems that with is giving me the way, I now feel confident to, you know, like with the rooms now, like, you know, in the record store, I can create rooms, I can add animations and stuff in, and I can play around and even see how that feels. And it just frees up so much time because it feels crazy to, um, like, I can't imagine any situation where that's nice, where I'm constantly going to reveal, hey, can you move this a little bit to, like, the left? Or, not, or And then can you also add, like, this? And that, I mean, like, Rathio's job would be literally, like, you know, yeah moving things <laughs> you know, yeah moving normally things. that's the reason i don't use a lot of like uh of these kind of like nesting control things because sometimes he wants like to just separate this a little bit and yeah this is pretty cool if we want to rescale stuff or anything like that but but it's so cartoony kind of thing you know that it doesn't make too much sense to think because in that way, we should have to, like, let's say, uh, redraw re everything, you know? So I try to keep it simple. So if these need some rebranding, he knows that he can go to the, like, the node itself that will be spawned when this application is open, and he knows that he can change all around. And I try not to make, like, say, because maybe he is, like, reparenting his stuff and everything. So I try not to reference anything uh, using, like, an absolute path. So instead of that, I try to go with um, sometimes export bar, sometimes a unique name. But, 
most of the time is just a unique name and uh, names that can be understandable. And he can just like change stuff around and uh, every day he's a little bit less scared of moving stuff around. Uh, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> Yeah. It's like we're at a dog show in like you're like you know of all programmers like introducing like the dog like, I've trained this what artist really well and like he could do these tricks you know with a little bit of extra work. Yeah, no, it's it's been amazing working with uh, with Mary. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Congrats, back since yeah yeah, but. I, I'm not afraid of bugs, you know, they are a challenge. They are just like a puzzle, you know, like you get an enigma in there and you want to solve them. And sometimes the enigma are created by the artist, but maybe it's a way of challenging me. Challenging me. So yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you feel really powerful uh, after fixing like a, a, um, a conflict that was created by someone else, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm glad I can give you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, you go, yeah. no, you go. No, go um, ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, it's funny that you've given me the the illusion that I'm really good at Godot because of the way that you've set up this system <laughs> of the game. So now I'm like, yeah, like you know, Godot's great. I use it all the time. It's like super, like you know. So you've given me that um. You've given me that illusion about that, that false reality, which um, is it feels nice. It feels it makes me feel like I'm uh, smarter than I am, which is always yeah. a nice thing. Yeah, I, I sometimes I feel like if you were, let's say, to give like a technical lesson, you know, it would be like it's really easy. You just have to create a character, text resource, and like graph all the stuff you want in there, and everything appears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, I mean, I absolutely put it on my uh, CV. I mean, I've done that with, um, I used to do it with, like, uh, with my CV. I, I, you have to always stretch the imagination. Have, have you opened Unreal? Yes. Well, then you, you're familiar with Unreal. Congratulations. Done. <laughs> okay, now I have news. I have a problem with the singular word of news. I think it's one news, two news. It's some variable. Yeah. It's not new, right? No, it's news. No, so um, you can change it to uh, uh, news item or um, what else you call news? Um, English is confusing. Yeah, I'm obviously trying to like think if because I don't want to get confused with feature or. Uh, oh, headline! That would have been. What? What? Why do we call it? What's hot? I, I call it news. That's all. Like one new, several, one news, several news. Oh, I think I think just um, dropped. I don't think it's good enough. I, sometimes I, I mess with the names. That's something I don't, I'm not sure of that. But sometimes I, have you seen that the cash, like the teal, it's called cashier sometimes, cash another times, till another times, because I'm learning vocabulary <laughs> because of you. <laughs> so I keep like changing names, but sometimes I get like, you know, uh, like long enough. And I just have really bad names in there, but yeah. So let me mm. see here. As, wait, did you see the... Um, oh, they got .com, yeah. officially. Yeah. In there? Yes. 12, 13 October. So we have a day, the memory. Yeah. You have to come to. I, I will, I mean, I, I will always come to Berlin. And I'll oh, I. Anywhere for Godot, I mean, come on. Yeah, I I want to, when they open the code for paper, I'm going to try to make a, a technical talk. Like, oh. go with some technical stuff going there. Oh, these so are amazing. Oh, I like, I really like the, <laughs> the not transparent background. Really oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah like, <laughs> these are just, these are examples. So the only thing they're not, you know. <laughs> I want to put them like that. It's a little bit like naive kind of thing, you know? <laughs> so, 
So these are like in the future. So this one is a future news, but then we have like these smaller news that are just titles. Yeah. So yeah, we've got. So the idea is trying to emulate, um, like you know, uh, music uh, websites and stuff like, um, uh, basically the, there's like features. So the features get like a big story. That's the big story. You get all the stuff, and then there's um. A review which could be like a review of something and then um funny enough and then new yeah news is are basically like they're just like headlines so you know when you're scrolling through it you just see like just okay. so you can't click on them you don't get any story you just get like the like a, a small icon and a kind of you know okay people yeah. are just gonna be upset of not being able to click them do you know that yeah, yeah. you think Maybe instead of like I titles, I, we can make like but, just but, like. But, hmm. I was. I think you could. You could be right. I was wondering. I thought to try. It, I, I was hoping if the captions themselves were self-explanatory enough that there's not more to it. Not like what, like I feel like as long as they they're not like leading in a way of like you yeah. know, like click to find out more or you can't like any stuff that. But if it's just um, but you could you could be right. You definitely could be right. We'll have to test it and then maybe see it's just to give myself hmm. less writing to do <laughs> no i think like a small but maybe instead of news maybe we can like flash news or something like that like will be like a small flash mm -hmm. news that flash news oh, that's a good yeah that's yeah good. like that's something like that yeah we, yes. we will do that yeah. yeah you have seen all creative <laughs> pipeline <laughs> right now it's yeah. like yeah. Just changing your stuff on the way to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. For now, uh, I created this yeah. featured one that will be the one we feel in there, in the Ocean newsletter. So I think I'm adding uh, them to the work day. Uh, this working day. This is the core of the game. You know, like we have different days that have their title, the scenario they will be on. In most of them are the store, but for example, the intro is the other one. They have different rooms, and every room has a node and directions and albums that will be in there. So everything is filled automatically with these working days. Uh, I created all these tools. Uh, it's I wanted to also, like, if this is the structure that will go on in the game, I will create some tools for memory to, like, have everything more visually uh, uh, done. But instead, I, th I thought it was good, you know? So I'm adding information That's in good. here. Yeah, and I will add, like, let's say the new, the fitter new in there and all, like, the array of small snippets of news that will be uh, in the other section so yeah yeah I, everything I mean, is I, like I love it. yeah i i feel like i'm more more than creating the game itself what i'm doing is like creating systems that mary can use to put the content in the engine so i like i feel like i'm more modding the engine so Mary can use it, you know, other than anything else. <laughs> yeah, but that's literally how the game um can exist, right? Otherwise mm -hmm. um it would just be me and all my um like notebooks. So Alex Alexander just asked what tool do we use for project management? Do you want to explain about the project management for Theo? I I think you can go with that. <laughs> Uh, what is Theo's... our team management tool? Yeah, well, you set up a notion, which is really great. Uh -huh. And um, I made lots of subheadings and sections in the notion. <laughs> and then I did not fill them in. No, that's not <laughs> true now. I started filling in the past week. I actually started writing stuff in it. So it's it's a notion in... Uh, Aspiring to use Notion is our tool of um, project management, I think. Probably Discord. Discord is our project management tool. It's probably the true answer. Yeah, indeed. We have like a, a really, 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 really long conversation 
that I can't find a single thing in there because everything is like really <laughs> mixed with a lot of stuff going on. But I think because of that, it's so quick to iterate, you know, when everything it's like more solid and we are just like adding the content and on the systems are static, we can keep adding documentation because it doesn't make any sense for Mary to lose uh, like a lot of time trying to put like a documentation that I can use, for example, instead of sending me the references. In, indeed, he didn't, he don't, he doesn't even send me the references. He just upload them to the project and I just remove them when I'm not using them anymore. So they don't get any space. But for us, it working like that is like, way faster, I just put this in there, I try to copy as much as I can, and then I remove them, and I remove them to the project, and we go to the next stage. And every day, every morning, we tell each other, like, the news, let's say, the typical day for us is, like, Mary being really happy about the wish lists, so he's just sharing the good news with me, you know, like, Oh, Rafael, can you believe this? Like, he's like so happy. Then we comment like maybe uh, some uh, some newspapers have like uh, said anything, something about the project. So we just share all the news and everything. Then we complain about how exhausted we are. He's exhausted, especially because he's like a father. So on his side, it makes sense. On my side, I just love complaining. <laughs> And then we just uh, go ahead. He said, oh, today I'm doing this, this, this. And then I'm like, today I'm doing this, this, this. And we just keep working uh, on our side. And if I need anything uh, from him, I just text him and the saying on his side. And if we receive any news or maybe like a contact, someone reach out to us, uh, we just share the information in real time. And that's all. That's our daily thing you know like yeah. i think it's exactly like that right dream yeah. team I mean, yes exactly yeah <laughs> i mean yeah absolutely yeah, I mean, yeah. it works for us yeah that could be and you go to many conferences yeah yeah i'm it exhausted works for us, it could work for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm exhausted but I mean, I also got, I, I think I already told you that uh, in the Guadalindi one, when I got back, I was like, I, I almost cried of like the emotion of seeing like everyone enjoying the game. Mm. You know, that people were reaching out and just like, oh, and I didn't tell you because it was in Spanish. You know, my mother-in-law played the game and she was like, uh, when I, I, I went to her house uh, today to to have lunch with her, you know? And she was like so happy telling me how she enjoyed the game and how all the characters were really cute, all the story was really interesting, that, that it was challenging but approachable kind of thing. And she's not, she's like the Candy Carash kind of uh, person, you know, like really casual kind of player. And she enjoyed it so much, I got a little bit emotional. You know, because I don't know, it's. Yeah. So cool, you know, like having a lot of different people enjoying the game. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very, very cool. I'm getting a little emotional indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed, I, I yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah, and we are about to finish the stream, I think. This one, it's working smoothly right now. Uh, I think it's already working, to be honest. Like, I might have finished in the meantime while talking to you perfect maybe not sure yeah it is let me see so yeah everything's working it's this one because you know it's not been updated like this i couldn't need to be like the other one but yeah, yeah. it's working amazing boom 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 did it again well, now I have to just change all the art and make it way nicer. Hmm. Mm. Yes, you have. Yeah. So the ocean, why it's not like, uh, let me, because maybe it's not updating that day. 
Let me fish it so it works like 100% and then I can rest. <laughs> so this one, why are you... Oh, sorry. Oh, shame. I called it Oh, shame. Is it okay? Yeah, because that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's too, um, oh, like um, in just if anyone wants to know, just in like a little homage, that's um, uh, one of my favorite um, uh, punk artists uh, called Jay Retards. It's a, one of my favorite songs by him, so that's why it's called Oh, it's such a shame. But yeah, it's quite long to say um, in one thing. So yeah, I think Oh, shame is. Fine. Look at this! How amazing it worked. Look at this it. beauty! <laughs> is this like good enough? Like, yeah, but it's perfect. Like we now have it, right? We can now do um, all the things. I just, I mean, like, I, I love the uh, the functionality of it. I'm just more thinking. Oh no, I have to draw stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. Like, I, I will. Yeah. It, we don't need like this needs a little bit of iteration because this one, for yeah. example, the hover, I yeah. need to put them well. different. I like the text and everything. It's still like on work, but yeah. because I wanted to add some feedback when hovering, you know, not just like this, but the hovering one will be different and these need to be the same size, but as they are not filled yet, I didn't want it to be empty, but I wanted it to have like this functionality. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, and yeah, yeah, pointing out like, where where are the dots? We have to put the dots in as well, right? So the dots are important, right? And the other line. I, I personally feel the dots are very important, but that's just me. No, 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 no. They are important. I totally agree. They are important, yeah. but it's not the same without the dots. No, no. no. But, but I don't know how to anyway. do them. Yeah. It's gonna be a mess. You know that. Of course. Wait, wait, and this is blue. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you didn't give me like a, a the one with the C, so it's just blue. I, I didn't give I... you anything. No, so I mean, yeah, I just you know, I I just trusted your uh, resourcefulness. But right? like you know, the thing works, and we can. Yeah, this margin. What, what do you think what? about this margin? The margin. Uh... Like oh, yeah, the main. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. amazing, perfect. right? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can change them you know like you can just grab the thing and like change it and everything's yeah, going yeah, to be yeah, all right yeah. the mobile has to be like hey, hidden in the very beginning and that's all like Done. go dots that's amazing right go yeah. dots i think right now oh i i also fixed like now the animation is complete when changing a scene because it was really weird that they got the stuff so mm. here Amazing. You didn't even read the news. <laughs> well, you read the news. No, I mean, that's... Wait, but I know that's how amazing. break dog break up. So I know yeah. the well, story. I, mean, well, I think th this is exactly all. This text is from the the, the twine, um, the the itch game. I just copied and pasted that from that from now. What about his misfire sexist solo album? He who there Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the guy Robbie Dare, the guy from Ego, uh, suddenly side up. He like makes his album, but it's like you know he he tries to be all like, oh yeah, like I'm making my solo break, and it's like you know bombastic, but actually it's just kind of really crass and like you know um, kind of gross. I didn't know that. Yeah. But Robbie he Dare. seemed nice. He Robbie Dare. Ah, I well, a little bit. Like uh, Gareth Green, I, I think Gareth, you know Gareth Gringleby. I can't even remember the names of Gareth Gringley, yeah. <laughs> yeah just, um, he's I mean, he's nice. Uh, like yeah, Robbie Dare. I mean, he made like yeah, made the album. Like was it he he who dares? Which just sounds a bit. I mean, I'm like I'm just you know there's like loads of um bands that I like. But the lead singers tend to be kind of like yeah. you know. But you know Gareth Gringley have to be nice because you know like look at this. He has to be like a really. Hug, hug gobble. It's a thing yeah, like hug gobble. Yeah, like I want to hug him, but probably there. Which one was? It was this one. What, don't we have like a picture of him? Yes, on the back of the brick dog rock album. That one. Yeah. 
there is. He in the seemed kind of nice. Well, he looks like my ex boyfriend. No, he, so he, he, sure. he's he's not he's not the he's not the the one who did the bad album. Ah, okay. It's the one. Okay. It's um the egg album. The, the singer of that. Ah, uh, of this one. Yeah, uh, it it um it goes sunny side up. Okay. That one. Okay, that, okay. That's, the, the singer of that he made and then he joins the the rest of um Brick Dog to make Brick Vigo. Okay. I just stand mad. I really like the sounds I choose. Like I feel like a sound designer here. Like Well the the crunch. Wow. Yeah. You know how many boing sounds I listened to until I got this work and this work and this work. <laughs> I even oh, recorded I'm, I'm some. Glad that you did. Is, uh, I, uh... <laughs> yeah, I've, I spent like way more time than I'm willing to 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 admit, you know. Yes, but, even I mean, like all this. Nah, but it's it's really really good. I probably take it for granted to be honest. It is like well, that's why we now put in your list of um all your hats, you know, like programming, <laughs> design, and now we put SFX. Yeah. To, uh, to, to tip your tip our hats to you know well, your, your to work. be honest i i really want like because of this game i really want to go like into that part i guess because nice. i i, I guess because i feel like this game will benefit a lot of that and i'm just like trying okay. to get into all the sound design thing uh, and i even ask some of the guys uh, that i met in the sound design side in uh, in Valencia for different like tools and stuff and they even like recommended me like libraries I could use that were quite affordable tools to mix everything and to make everything like the same level of volume and everything so I'm just going that rabbit hole I think the acoustic rabbit hole and one thing yeah. people told them it's quite true we are not in the game we should have like characters Maybe not like custom. It's it's on the uh, as I I like to say to you, it's on the docket. Okay. <laughs> okay. We will. I've got, I've got like I've got a docket of like to do, and then there's like you know things which like these have to be done now, and the things which are like we will do them, uh at some point. Um, hmm. Yeah, I've I've already got like I've got a puzzle like we're gonna have puzzles for both of us in there. So oh. Oh, now we have to do a dog card, but that's also true. Yeah, we'll have to do that as well. It's on the docket. Okay. I'm gonna add it right now. I've got a. I've got a... Yeah, see, we need I'm, to I'm one. Using, see, look, look at me complaining that we're, I don't do. Um, I'm not even in the right tab. Uh, that I don't do project management, but here I am writing <sighs> on a list. Maybe we we should use like the overused good old sprite that comes the SVG that comes with the game. You know. The one that is a square, really, that everyone is using it, like to prototype. Maybe we can yeah. just like go with that in some place. Like Someone it seems that we forgot. Outfit, and they're like dressed up like it. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, like they got all the SPG. Yes, we could also do that. Yeah, indeed. Like, or maybe like when yeah, they are talking. Yeah. It's in here. Like they got all the SCV, but even with the same resolution and everything, like really contrasting your beautiful art. <laughs> uh, I love it. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I am, yeah. I'm all in. Uh, we will eventually, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think we are we are finishing, like, wrapping up the stream because what I wanted to do is already here. And I need to rest because I did, like, I think it's, like, seven hours of a stream today, so... <laughs> I don't what? even know if I'm talking to people or I'm talking to myself. Maybe I go to bed, like, narrating my life. You know, like, hey, guys, I'm going to bed. I'm putting my pajamas. <laughs> 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 Something like that. I start to confuse, like, reality to stream things. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we can, like, wrap up and just, yeah. like, finish the stream. So, do you want uh, not to make like a upgrade to someone in there, or do you want me to just like disappear, like kind of like cheapskate Tony, like ta da? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you prefer? <laughs> Where uh, do we read? Okay, let's see if we have like 
someone that would like. <clears throat> okay, so we have a few people that are. Uh, I even have like a, a Spanish developer that is called Patito Dev that he's developing uh, Godot. Maybe uh, I think it's developing Godot. Yeah, he's like preparing the jam in Godot. So maybe we can go with him. What do you think? What do you think? It English might be better for the me. audience. Yeah, I don't know if he knows English. Yeah. Then go with English. Yeah. Not sure. I don't know if he knows English, to be honest. Like. I, I usually think like everyone knows a little bit of English, but then I realize it's not the case. That some of the people, they, they get really anxious when talking to English. And it's normal, I guess. We speak English very bueno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Like, maybe he can try. I, I'm going to ask him. Uh, no, because I can have to listen to him and I can't. I will let you choose, uh, Nat. Right, Patito? Yeah, we will try to make him speak in English. What do you think? He has developed a jam game that I think is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think you can start following him and he was one of the best avatars in all tweets so thank you everyone thank you for coming by i hope you had fun and you learned a little bit of uh, the code and everything i was developing in the game and i hope you find interesting everything or at least a little bit of what we had to say about the game thank you for coming by and do you want to say thank you or something <laughs> yeah no just also like you know thank you um thank you Kudo, for like you know like recognizing how awesome Theo is and uh, letting her do the stream and um, yeah thank you for everyone uh, just for all the attention for what I said this yeah it's really yeah. really special and really nice so it means a lot thank you yeah thank you very much see you bye bye bye, bye. bye. have a lovely day you can go ah oh, and wish list wish list lots of wish oh, yeah, lists. And do that yeah yeah please <laughs> uh, go wish list like we are the worst seller we are the worst